The start date is 60228. With the Alcara system only a few days away, Admiral Trailblazer has called an emergency meeting for the senior staff of the Achilles, briefing them not only about his people, but of their historical connection to the lost Iconian Empire, and how vital the diplomatic talks are for not only both the Alcaran and Aldemona peoples, but for the United Federation of Planets. This is a two-threat game, and before that meeting, a few things we will check in on. First of first, we look to the conference deck, if you will, of the Achilles as one Captain Penned was looking into certain matters. Yay! And what is it you were going to be looking into? There's a few days. Uh, we are at this point. We are checking in on uh, what everyone's doing uh, on the days before the meeting. So there's about four days of downtime minus the training exercise. Uh, well, I think apart from saying one day aside for that Andorian uh, event, shall we say? The other three would be researching the Codex, because kind of need to get that one done. Uh, give me a reason, command, or con difficulty of uh, three, assisted by computers plus relevant department. Uh, focus in diplomacy, because I need this for the diplomatic talks coming up. Uh, take a threat, please. I currently have two rerolls now. And you said the systems were computers and whatever department? Yep. You've hit the number so far. Uh, give me seven challenge dice. I think I might have to uh, re-roll some of them. If you want to. Uh, I'll give you a threat to re-roll four. Just all chevrons. Uh, so after days of research, uh, along with your research team that you've had over the few days, uh, you've been able to take time to not only get a good study of the uh, Codex, Codex Legis Galacticae, or the Codex of Galactic Law, um, you have a general understanding of its various in the short it is what it says on the cover it is a book of galactic law uh that is that has been signed for thousands of uh, hundreds of thousands of years uh the chief signatories being the aldemona and the alcaran peoples who supposedly overthrew some uh, ancient regime, and this is their pact to ensure that that never happens again. Um, you can at any point um, from here on spend momentum to, uh, you can either spend momentum to obtain information to simply have an article clarified, <clears throat> um, but also uh, you can reference it again by doing a re uh, a reason uh, uh, a reason roll, basically to look it up on the computer again. The same way you'd look up uh, Federation law, Klingon law. This is now yet another legal text that you're aware of. Um, it is a lengthy text with various that does reference some sub articles and uh, supplementary texts, and, but the core of the document seems to be this codex. Everything leads back to the codex, much like how in Federation law, everything leads back to the charter. There are various, you know, there's the Starfleet regulations, there's uh, the Vulcan Science Directorate's requirements, 
Um, there's Andorian law, uh, family clan laws, but ultimately everything ties to the Charter. Likewise for signatories of this galactic law. Um, given the chevrons you have right now, um, there are certain articles that you can just, you can ask about five article, five, one, two, three, four, yep, five, five articles that you can clarify right now. Yeah. And you should have the list. Yeah. The, um, all the different articles. Yep. Um... Is Article Zero available first? It is, yep. Now that you understand it. Then I'll just take uh, Articles Zero through Four. Okay. So, Article Zero is the sacred secret. It requires that all signatories of Galactic Law maintain the secret of the location of Alcara and of the history and cultural culture of the Alcara and Aldemona people. Um, the reason for this is because it's to hide them from the old empire. This is a rule. They're meant to be all other articles fall away in the face of the sacred secret, because if they lose their world, the rebellion that they rose so long ago can be squashed again so this world is meant to be a new staging ground should the old empire or a similar version of it uh, arise again uh, the only people who are allowed to know this are people who uh, have been invited to the world and are explained what the secret is uh, and people who have been uh, acknowledged as a lesser or greater power as listed later in the document Cool. Uh, article one, the purpose of galactic law is the outline kind of gave it to you, but basically it's meant as a guideline for the Aldemon and Alcarn people in particular and all people below them um, to To have a sort of unified code between the two of them and anyone who's underneath them. Um, to have a a check back point for any new laws to ensure tyranny doesn't get brought back. Uh, to ensure that chaos isn't bred into it or ineffi uh, excessive inefficiency. Um, but it also gives very specific directions as to it's meant to give very specific directions as to when armed force can be used either openly or covertly. So they have, they basically given themselves rules as to how they may act in warfare or how they may act in intelligence work. Um, but, and the ultimate underline, and this is article one and two tying it together a bit more, uh, but it's, toward the end of galactic interest so it has to, it can't you can't just take a planet because it has resources and it has to be attacked because you believe it's a threat or because you think it needs to be protected and you have to have clear evidence as to why that is um so even just judging from the first two slash three articles mm -hmm. the entire codex is basically just a set of guidelines for people who are willing to follow it to prevent the rise of another dictator slash tyranny situation. Uh, well, the last thing that it also, and this falls under principles, is that it's to... it's The main thing is to prevent tyranny and such things. Um, but it's also to try to promote uh, technological and social advancement of all powers of all people, all sophant or intelligent sapient people. So anything that would uh, retard that or hinder it unjustly is to be fought against because that's tyr It may not be tyranny by government. It's tyranny by philosophical uh, sloth or uh, what have you. Um, the principles indicate that no, that all sophants must be held to this law. Even in their ignorance, they must be held to it because it, otherwise, it turns into 
minor threats can grow into big threats very quickly as uh that seems to be the second article is pointing more toward why they formed it um well actually further than that the Eldemon and Alcarans once upon a time trusted their own each individual was trusted with their own judgment and discretion um that was found to not be tenable uh and led to tyranny uh, uh unjust actions uh hasty actions that sort of thing so eventually they codified it all into the codex so that they always had a reference they always had something they could go back to and hold each other accountable because the old laws were insufficient they were self-supporting laws rather than laws that actually held them accountable the state could do no wrong was the old adage. The state can do wrong and will be held accountable if it does do wrong. And that applies to the Aldermont Alcarns and anyone else beneath them. Uh, as articles one, two, zero. Yeah, from zero to four. Four. Article three, the founding members, is the uh, the migrant fleet of the Aldemona and oh sorry not if they wouldn't they wouldn't use that word yet um it's the Aldemona and Alcarn people are the founding members as the two peoples that brought down that were instrumental in bringing down the Iconian uh, the old empire um they are oilers that formed this you can read but you know that the Iconian thing's coming yeah. from before <laughs> But they don't. They never use the name Iconian. They always call it the Old Empire. Like they were trying to strike it from history. Um, okay. But yeah, the founding members of the Aldermont and Alcarans, uh, and it lists a, a set of names of people who signed the document on that day. Uh, it lists a collection of generals from the Aldermona side and a collection of of high advisors is the phrase and then there's one most serene uh the it doesn't clarify what those are those are titles but your translator catches the the Eldemona are all admirals like that's their highest rank in their society is an admiral um and of all the alcarn people the highest rank of them seems to be the most serene but there's also all these high advisors who are considered of importance uh, there are a total of. Gotta check again. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six names for each people, so a total of 12 names. Um, and Article 4. Oh, Assumption of Galactic Participation. Uh, yeah. Even if you're not, they hold these laws to every sophant, every power in the galaxy. Uh, and they specify, the specifications in it seem to indicate they're talking about the Milky Way galaxy uh, in particular. Um, and they will enforce these laws upon everyone within the galaxy. Um, and that if anyone is participating, although it's, it's galactic participation. So if they do not interact with the galaxy, so they only affect their own world, then they aren't part of galactic law. They, their influence isn't large enough for them to be even considered a threat at best. They be, they can be considered a protected people, but beyond that, they're not beholden to the law. Uh, anyone who can travel the galaxy, uh, is and considered sophant or sentient uh is uh but is held to this uh is considered to be participating in galactic affairs of which all galactic law applies um yeah well at least that's progress made in trying to better understand the two sets of people we're about to meet Uh, the last thing I'll say about, uh, to clarify in article two is that, um, the, again, the powers have to be held to that high standard of galactic interest. It's, if it's not of galactic interest, 
uh, then the Galactica tends not the, the Galactica isn't really meant for that. It's meant for large scale threats, large scale problems rather than petty what it can what the document considers petty concerns. So basically if you're not threatening everything, kind of not up its problem. It, yeah, it's not the if it's not the galaxy's problem, then the galaxy's the galactic law will not care about what you're doing. But if you become a galactic problem, we, we're going to come and find out what's going on and fix it. And actually, it's considered a galactic imperative. It's it, it's a it's it's their it's one of the great imperatives. They have to do something about it. They can't not do something. What? And they didn't consider the Borg that. That is definitely a question you want to ask. Them. <laughs> I, was about to say, I was about to say. But yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Yep. Uh, we will cut to one Commander Throck. Boop. Uh, this room isn't like this anymore. What? Because not everyone's unconscious. <laughs> Don't need the force field of no death. Oh, these people are fine. Slowly, this page is loading because it was just like the the unconscious people were like slowly coming in and then and then just like going out as well. Yes, it's not a good image when you have an entire unconscious room and just pemmed fully conscious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Commander Thorlock, what are you doing since you've come back to uh, from Vale? What is the primary thing you're uh, you're uh, worried about, or dealing with, or trying to deal with? What do I have on my plate right now, actually. I feel like this might be one of the few times where Thorlock's able to relax for a little bit. You know, looking over law isn't really her forte. Um, yeah, it's not mine either. You you have good reason. You shush. Um, <laughs> jamming. Yeah. Uh, I think Thorlock's just enjoying a nice meal right now. Really. Not currently working on ship business. Give me... Whoopsie, that doesn't even give me... Uh... Insight. Plus... Command difficulty one as you're relaxing and enjoying yourself and pondering your day or your days. Do I have a relevant focus? Uh, philosophy would be a good one, but um, I don't have that. Observation, All right? Yeah, I'll scroll to here. Make one. Thinking back to your visit on Vale and to how the Achilles has accounted for itself in the last uh, year, the last few months, I should say. Um, the ship seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, the crew is doing pretty good, uh, considering uh, what it's been faced with. I mean, there's been a few, there's been a case of trauma here or there, injury here or there. And not to be dismissive of those concerns, but welcome to an active Starfleet vessel. Things happen. Um, but the health of the ship overall, pretty good. Uh, people are actually reporting when they're hurt. They're reporting when they're advancing. There's people learning things all the time. Um, but there is a sense that something is off, but whatever it is, it's not on the Achilles. That you know for certain. And you know it's not on Vale either. You kinda, there's a half second of, wait a minute, and then, oh, wait, no, you were, you were just there. Everything was fine. 
uh, the planet was to give you a quick summary the planet is having a nice long philosophical theological discussion with the people and trying to understand you basically have a bunch of uh religious navel gazers on a whole planet now uh on a whole planet so yeah you know it's like vulcan really um i i, I expect there's a little bit more emotion involved Yes, yes, especially with the Klingons and various other people. But it looks yeah. to be quite the melting pot of... It is something the Vulcans would love... Uh, the ideal IDIC planet. A yeah. melting pot of... Uh, not a melting pot of ideas, but such a rich mosaic of ideas. Uh, which, who knows what they'll be like in a hundred years. Yeah. But something is off in the galaxy. You're just... you, But you do know it's on the ship. You do know it's on that planet. Does it seem like it's focused on where we're going? For a thread, I'll answer that. Go for it. Secret messages. It is not focused on the Alcara system, though it is going to be influenced by it. You know, if only we had a counselor here. <laughs> <laughs> Your counselor is currently uh, beset on all sides by various people who are having religious uh, awakenings and yeah. having to deal with that. It's like, like, no one's hurt, but everyone wants to talk to the counselor. And it's like, well, I, I, I really should talk to these people. People are having crisis of faith situations here, and yeah. they need to get that sorted before they can get back to work. This is the, the only time a counselor is important. Wanted. Sad face. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's true. Sad face. No. Uh, and with that happy endorsement by the captain, uh, we go to. And go to therapy. <laughs> a certain corridor. Not... These things aren't of concern. We don't worry about these things right now. Oop, not these either. Ryloff. Hi. What is your uh, Romulan security officer in Starfleet uniform up to over the last couple of days of oh. your journey to Alcara? Uh, uh, that was the Vulcan asking me to do a thing, wasn't there? Yeah, the, the your uh, one of your cadet, uh, uh, Saral. Yeah, yeah. all this lady. She wanted to have an exchange of ideas. Yeah. So you have that particular meeting? Yeah. Um, as I recall, oh yes, I remember now. Yeah. Cadet Saral wanted to share the teachings of Surik, um, but also wanted to learn about the Romulan belief in the elements and the balance and how the balancing works and how important that is and so on. Mm -hmm. Sort of, and part of it is to understand something about Romulan culture, but also to kind of make to mend fences, to mend bridges between you, because she's she's felt she's been, as I recall, she felt she was being unfair to you. Uh, and that's not correct. That's not the correct way to be for a Vulcan or any Starfleet officer. So she's making an effort to learn more about something she doesn't know. But not doing it for free. She'll teach you about her culture as well. And is also trying to get over her trauma. So <laughs> That too. That, that, that has a part of it in it. <laughs> she may not advertise that fact, but, you know, read between the lines. Um, yeah. Give me... Insight or presence plus command or con difficulty to to see uh, how much you're able to glean from this experience. 
as you meet over the next couple of days and talk about this document, this particular element, how that element relates to that element, how this particular writing circuit may apply to that, but then there's this sub document that may also apply to it, but then there's this commentary, so on and so on and so on. Mm hmm. All right. Uh... So, theology, philosophy. <laughs> yeah. I definitely don't have a focus. I mean, paranoia? She might be trying to kill you. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> uh, yeah. Complicate your age. Okay. <laughs> uh, um... What is our Admiralty focus today, anyway? Oh, uh, at current, it would be... Helps that I put them on the top of the board so I can find them easier. Um... Admiralty focus. Persuasion. Which isn't exactly gonna help me here, but hey, good to know. Um, yeah, we have one of those. I'll, I'll give you a momentum. Okay. Amazing. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, it is a nineteen as well. I know. Go away, Finn. Um. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, I mean, value of respect is a privilege that few earn, and she is trying. I'll take that. Uh, no, don't keep it, but... Yeah, at first it was probably one of those, you kind of, you probably gave off that Romulan sense of I demand you prove yourself to me sort of attitude. You may not say it exactly that way, but there's that implication. You must deserve, you must be worthy of my attention. So make yourself worthy. sort of. And to some species that can come off hostile, it is a little hostile, but you know, respect is earned. Uh, Sorrel rises to the occasion and uh, defends vigorously uh, the teachings of Saral uh, and defends her observations of the elements and so on. Um, and yeah, you learn quite a bit about uh, modern Romulan thought, especially with the ideas of unification between Romulan and uh, Vulcan people. And it would seem that Saral is uh, a student of uh, Spock's teachings. Uh, not that she's jumping up and down about it but when she talks she references him quite a bit some of his writings some of his student uh, uh, students writings and so on um, so there's this she has this heavy bend on unification of Romulan and Vulcan philosophy um, so she so you've learned that Sorrel is a unificationist which I'll actually note as a trait for free whether you share that belief is up to you to worry about <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. Uh, Vulcan Romulan Unificationist. Um. Yeah. Does Ryloft uh, uh, reveal any of his opinion on the matter to Sorrel? Does he just kind of leave that revelation to himself? Um, like Sorrel never just straight out says he's unification, but when you're listening to her over those past couple days, you're like, "Oh, I get what you." I mean, yes, she is saying what she's do she is doing what she said she was going to do, but there's also that, "Oh, I know what you are. I figured out your political and philosophical leaning. I know what you are now." Hmm. 
something uh jesus christ that was noise thank you uh vocal cords i don't know what the fuck did that um <laughs> He's he's definitely more towards the idea of unification, yeah. But far more of the opinion that it is a far off thing. Coming from the Romulan side of the fence. Mm hmm. All right. Though, uh, with the current Romulan political part factions, he definitely sounds more state than imperial. Uh, yeah. Um. Give me insight security difficulty two uh, as a something might come to mind. Given this, it's not, it's not something that Sura is specifically telling you. It's something that you're realizing on your own about mm -hmm. what Romulus is going to be like in the next year or two. Given what you know, because you know a lot more about the current geopolitical state of affairs or interstellar state of affairs than a cadet does. Yeah. Um, I'm still paranoid for whatever that does. That is making this possible. Yeah, oh, I have a focus in paranoia then. Mm -hmm. um, lovely. That's wonderful. Uh, I'll give you a threat. Sure. Do I? I will. Two momentum generated. As you get the feeling that this war is going to end not with some glorious battle, not some key capture of some strategic point. It will end suddenly and without warning. And depending on how the Romulan people are feeling at that time as a people will change the course of history uh the problem is that romulus doesn't exist in a vacuum it exists uh among other powers how the klingons are treating how starfleet's treating them and as it is right now things don't look very good based on like sir just kind of sparked that in your head and it's just one of those things are going to spiral out of control it doesn't even matter which side of this war wins i mean you'd rather state one over imperial but you know there's a huge paradigm shift coming and it's probably coming within the next few years um it's something about it about how the klingons have been acting in the intelligence reports how starfleet's been acting the stories you hear from back home just it all just adds up now that you think about it in a sort of with a sort of vulcan clarity it just it just comes to you and you're state in a paranoid uh, from out of the paranoid cloud. Now, what you do with that particular revelation, you know, it's up to you. Charming. You're welcome. To the bridge I go. Mm -hmm. To terrorize, I mean to enlighten one Lieutenant Arlen. Oh boy. <laughs> so, you've had a lot more chances over the last few days to man the bridge, uh, to... But, you know, uh, you may have other things you do aboard the ship. What have you been nah. What has been your focus over the last couple of days? Um, I, I, I believe I have, have a husband I need to, to take care of. Old Yeller style? No. Um. No. 
No, no, spend spend time with him and just kind of Big process this. And and just as process, hey, so command. Man, is that something we want to do? Is that something I want to do? I'll pull you over to the lounge, actually. Oh, whoops, I forgot all these guys are down here. Whoopsie. <laughs> do do do. Uh, no. So you're getting more bridge hours. Yeah, still not. 100% sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Why? Don't you want to go... Why Don't you want to push those limits and uh, get your own... I don't know, space dock or whatever it is engineers do when they go high up in rank? I'm not entirely sure. What does happen anyway? Uh, uh Usually running a... A, a space docker running in larger ships or even starship design. Oh. I don't know, but uh, I thought about like pushing the uh, uh, limits of of engineering and and making technology do ooh, ooh, new things and and pushing the uh, limits of material sciences and that kind of stuff, not people. Well, you need people to do work. I found that all the time, really. Uh, there's always a family. But, I mean, you know, if you want to do all that, why not do the Corps of Engineers? Why stay on a starship? I mean, I don't mind. I like to see all kinds of cool things. But, you know, you're the one that's looking for new frontiers of engineering. And they seem to be pushing you into that command chair a lot more often these days. So you think the uh, command and chair is my new frontier? Mm, I don't know about that. That's up to you, really. I mean, I could have stayed in Denobula this whole time and, you know, had a bunch of people connect me there. I could have gone to uh, Vulcan at the Science Directorate. You know, and then there's that, uh, those new uh, projects they started doing five years ago with the, uh, that RIM initiative. But... I stuck with you. My future, my frontier is you, but you're the one that has to push your career in the direction you're going. I can always study my stars, but you're trying to make new starships. I, I mean, didn't they, didn't, aren't you upset that they took out your uh, hull parts from the, or that project that piezoelectric thing that you had for the uh, ship you replaced with that crystal carbon hull plating or something like that wasn't it yeah that was that was a thing so i mean and it makes makes sense overall but it still kind of uh hurts seeing that in that uh, your project was uh upgraded using alien tech like that that's technology AI physically could not have come up with. That that uses crystals and in, in material sciences that we don't have. Uh give me presence or insight plus engineering difficulty of three as you're considering your future. With Yolan, and well, not with Yolan in particular, but your career. So that seems my to be career in discussion. total. The Starfleet protocols. If you want to use that, that that'll color my answer. <clears throat> um, or technical insight. You could use that as well, but that'll color my answer. Just let me know which one you're using. <clears throat> I use technical insight. Uh, one threat. Sorry. Oh. 
technical insight wise, uh, you think that there are, there's always going to be someone, or if there's anything Starfleet's taught you your character is that uh, there's always someone who has more tech than you. Um, it is rare that Star the United Federation of Planets has been the most, well, not rare per se, but um, it has, for more. Uh, there's a lot of times where Starfleet has been not been the most technologically advanced thing, whether it's the First Federation, the Borg, the Dominion, uh, various other species that have been, you know, hundreds of species that Starfleet's encountered. Um, you can push what Starfleet knows, but at the end of it, uh, it may be puzzling out the achievements of others in applying that discovery rather than thinking that you're going to be the one that breaks the new ground. As much as you may want to break that new ground, you may be wanting to look at uh, the technological achievements and work from there. You may innovate, and you now have a rich source of innovation from the uh, Shiri, for one, but that may be one path you want to consider. If you're not thinking command, uh, that may be a better direction for Arlen on the Achilles is something that he's kind of coming to grips. Otherwise, he has to go back. He has to go among the the most razor sharp minds of Starfleet and those people are back at the Starfleet Corps of Engineers uh back in the core systems. But out here, see see if I wanted to stay in the if I wanted to stay in the core systems, I could could have. I wanted to be on the frontier cuz this is where all the actions at. This is where er, the new discoveries are made. Mm -hmm. This is where the new technology is found and where it's most useful. So. But what Arlen does with that revelation is up to him. Mm hmm. To the bridge. Once again. Except the lieutenant isn't there. He's dealing with other stuff. Cadet. Yes. You've had a few days. You even had a full on. You got to be part of one of the big command tests. Uh, well, not command tests, but one of the big drills the admiral does. Uh, yeah, that was. Yeah, that had, was, you, it was a good time. Uh, but what is what's been concerning Ven over the last few days, minus the uh, the big test we went through last time? Well, I mean, we are going to this big. Um, you know, we are dropping off of big admiral for this big he's not big he's slender go ahead sorry no, no. you know what i mean i know um <clears throat> and uh you know with everything that has been learned over the past couple of weeks um this is a lot um the the fact that iconians have have come up uh, is is concerning because I mean, I read about them in my textbooks. Um, they are not not to be messed around with. Demons of uh, what were they? Air and darkness. Hmm. Um. Yeah, the, the fact that we're even uh, approaching anything about this is so much more than Ben bargained for. So how is the cadet coping or attempting to cope? Ah, uh, well, you know, it, it's hard because I would say he, he'd go to the counselor, but we do not have the counselor right now. Oh, uh, yeah, you're on the wait list, but, you know. Yeah, I'm on the wait list for that. Um, uh, you're pinned in for sometime next week or maybe the week Yeah, after. yeah. It's not probably sure. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. like, you, <laughs> you uh -huh. could go see Counselor Zollerpol, but, like, talking with the Klingon Counselor is... I mean, you could, yeah. that's true. I mean, uh, the other Counselor is a lot more available for some reason. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. <laughs> um, it's all that yoga he gets people to do. Klingon yeah. yoga. Mm -hmm. it involves punching the people next to you as you stretch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crouch, uh, crouching uh, Targ. You mean Crouching uh, Panther? No, no, Crouching Targ. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you lash out randomly. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, Be ready for anything. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think he would do, uh, he'd, he's not going to do, like, a hollow novel. Uh, he, he's going to go onto the holodeck and hang around a recreation of, let's say... Hang on, hang on. Yeah, some point in a, Italy. Uh, I, I was gonna say that, but then I'm like, hmm. Uh, I know. Um, he is going to be wandering around in um. Uh, Ptolemaic Egypt. V visiting the pyramids. Not as they were in their heyday, but as they were in the period of Ptolemy. What can I of Egypt again? Sorry. Huh? To uh, I'll, I'll spell it out. Uh, you can't, well, Ptolemaic. You can't just Ptolemaic. pick normal places, can you? No, no, I can't. No, it, it, it's e Egypt after the conquests of Alexander. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And one of his generals t took over. Yeah, that, that's that's what he's doing to relax. Uh, visiting, um, visiting the Nile and hanging out along the riverbanks. Why here? Kinda, kind, kind of like a vacation. Did you ask why here? Yeah. Well, uh, Ven does have a bit of a love for history, um, and man, you know he he's done like the Rome. <laughs> oh no, I've fallen in the Nile. <laughs> he he's done the Rome programs plenty of times. He's explored like Rome up and down. Like from the Renaissance Rome to the Roman Republic to the Roman Empire, he he wants to try somewhere a bit different, but still in kind of that Mediterranean like range of influences of the classical world. Has Ben considered becoming a historian specialist? Uh, no. Uh, it's, it's not what he's, it's not what he's, like, super good at. It's more so a artifact of where he grew up. He, he, he grew up to have a, a strong respect for history. But his, his, his real, his real, you know, talents and his real skills lie in in astrophysics, in uh, high level, uh, high level chemical uh, analyses. What do what, you think okay. Ven's untapped potential really is, or what does Ben think it is? Mm. Where does he see himself once he's not wearing the cadet pips anymore? He's a real officer. Um, he sees himself on the starship. Maybe the Achilles. You know, he stops and pauses. Maybe not the Achilles. Um, but, but somewhere, continuing to do scientific research, continuing to try to unlock the mysteries of the world, uh, of the universe, just as uh, people in ancient times tried to unlock the mysteries of the world. Give me an insight, science roll, difficulty two. Uh, focus here is going to be, mm, it will be history, I will say, given that that's kind of how you're reflecting, the lens through which you're reflecting and relaxing mm -hmm. with. Uh, I am going to spend a momentum for a third die. 
just for the sake of having a reroll. It was two 19s. Uh, you have tr you have managed to treat your own time travel trauma. Oh, that's fun, and I did it through the, the lens of history. Yeah, as you kind of, you're able to kind of relax and think back on it, and maybe, yeah, maybe history isn't your character's focus by any means, but, uh, I mean, it is a focus he has, but there are grander things ahead of him than there are frightening things behind him. As frightening as the things behind him are. Yep. And as long as I strike that balance between the past, the present, and the future, I don't need to be afraid of either. And new scene as we gather in the conference room. People walk into the conference room. Admiral Trailblazer's tapping away at his console as usual. Looks up every, looks over his shoulder, and nods to acknowledging that people are there, and then continuing with what he's doing, making a half-hearted like your uh, carry-on gesture. Yes, I'm only shouting at the cadet today. Everyone else files in, I presume? Yep. Good day, everyone, says Trailblazer to the group of you. Huh. Morning, Admiral. Sir. Morning, Admiral. Do you wish to take a seat, Admiral? No, I'm fine. Thank you, though. And he kind of stands at ease and kind of puts his hands behind his back and kind of gazes around the room. I am going to brief you on something of great importance and I must impress upon you that due to a current treaty between the Alcaran people and the United Federation of Planets all of this that you are being briefed on will be on a need-to-know basis and you are to keep it as secret as you possibly can now I understand uh, that I will be doing this briefing in chunks and briefing each group as I believe they need to know. Uh, so this group uh, is giving the most de one, well, the more, one of the more detailed briefings I'm going to be giving on the topic. Um, uh, Cadet Ben, the reason that you're here 
uh, is that, frankly, I am going to have a briefing with Drebin and his senior staff, but you are a trusted sensor operator, and you need to understand from a command level point of view what it is you're looking at. And you need to understand, given the amount of pips in this room, how important it is that nothing that you see on those sensors gets written up in a report that goes back to the Academy. It goes to Captain Pend or Commander Thralik. And if you have a security issue, bring it with Ryloff. If you have an engineering issue, bring it up with Arlen. But it can't go to your fellow cadets. It can't spread outside the command structure. These secrets are too important. The yeah, simpler answer would simply be to remove you from contention, but frankly, and Captain Penn, feel free to correct me on this, you're the best sensor operator this boat has. I'd rather we had our best sensor operator, not our second best. Yes, sir. And he's, he's looking around the room, you know, taking to heart that Pip's comment. Counting, yeah. the pip, counting the pips in the room, then looking down at his collar, realizing he doesn't have any pips, then <laughs> looking up. There's like at least 14 pips in this room. <laughs> Never mind the bar. Uh, I was going to say, more, just walk if around you, with. <laughs> more if you but count I'm... the bars. Plus, uh, you know, how, I wonder how many pips the Admiral like has in his pocket. Um, question. <laughs> if it's any comfort, cadet, uh, when I was at your rank, I had to take command of the ship I was aboard. That was a fun time. So uh, consider this uh, me trying to go easy on you. Thank you, sir. I wouldn't be as nice. I'd get out of cadet ranks if I were you before Captain Penn makes Admiral if I were you, cadet. That's never going to happen. Trailblazer gives you a look, Ben. Like, really? That's a different conversation for another day, Admiral. Alright. So. As you may have overheard or heard rumored, uh, my people, the Alcurns, um, and the Aldemona, my co-species, as it were, um, over 200,000 years ago, the Iconian Empire stretched from rim to rim of the entire galaxy. They dominated star systems that you have heard of and ones that have been obliterated from existence. Uh, in time, they did many miraculous, what you might consider miraculous things or incredible technological achievements. Uh, but in time, the entire empire grew corrupt. And people, as one does in large empires, tend to wish to rebel against such things. The Iconian Empire then constructed new life forms to ensure their will was maintained throughout the galaxy. Those life forms were the Admiralty of the Aldemona and the covert strike teams of the Alcarans. Our job was to infiltrate every military, every government, every religion, and ensure the loyalty of any power within the Empire. And we did a very good job of that. Uh, people appearing on planets, uh, angels from on high, telling its people that they must go on a crusade to save the Empire, and so on and so on. Um, and we were the perfect constructed people because we did not come off like androids as you would understand that we did not come off as uh, clones we were we seemed otherworldly ethereal um, magical even by people who didn't understand that Iconia technology was far beyond what they understood and we were programmed or indoctrinated to follow the empire's will 
until such time that we found that the Empire was the threat to the galaxy. Eventually, our goal of protecting the galaxy overrode our goal to protect the Empire, at which point we helped orchestrate the destruction of the Empire. And that's when the Iconian Empire was obliterated. Since that time, my people and the Aldemona people have worked together to ensure that the Empire never comes back, to ensure nothing like it ever comes back. And we have worked both covertly and overtly to ensure that the galaxy never suffers from such things. And also to help make sure that all the technology that the Iconians tried to jealously covet was either discovered, rediscovered by its descendants uh, or by new species that came ar uh, around over the thousands of years. Um, the Codex Legus Galacticae is a document that we use to restrain ourselves. We are, as a constructed people, we are ones that are also constructed rather specifically to not, we need a codex. We, we don't, we have a free will, but the free will is attached to a body of law. The body of law used to be the orders of the empire. Since that time, we've been able to transfer that to the codex. Um, and that has been our guiding principle for the last well, for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, when your Federation encountered us, uh, well, the Achilles encountered us, strangely, um, we learned that there were growing powers in the galaxy, like the Federation, like the Klingons, like the Romulans, the Tholians, and so on. And we have infiltrated ourselves into each of the powers through various means. It's just that in my case, I am the agent that oversees the Federation. I make sure the Federation is not, and I report if the Federation is becoming a tyrannical power or not. And if it's ready to participate more vigorously in galactic affairs. Um, the reason this is so secret is frankly because the sort of information we have tends to attract treasure hunters, uh, warlords and conquerors who would try to thieve the information and technology that we have. Um, but we also try to make sure that technology does get out to people who need to know it. Uh, or we try, unlike the Federation, we do interfere frequently in the affairs of various species to in the interest of galactic progress. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to be tyrants ourselves. We don't want to be forcing ourselves too much upon the various species that exist. Reasons why we haven't interfered in the Dominion War or the Klingon Starfleet War or the Romulan Civil War and so on. There are certain affairs that are not as much as the Aldemona like to style us as such, we are not the galactic police. We are its defenders. Um, now, normally this speech, we wouldn't really get into it. We wouldn't be talking about it. We wouldn't be inviting you to Alcara, except things are escalating um, in dimensional sciences. As of right now, as of a few weeks ago, the Klingons pierced what you know as the hyperspace barrier it is the barrier by which various peoples believe that they have the contact with their gods or some higher power or higher understanding of the universe the problem is that that barrier exists for a reason um it is a barrier that keeps various realities from bleeding into each other and this has caused for the Klingon Empire a rather catastrophic event where a, an alternate universe of Kishon crystals that are did not achieve enlightenment, did not turn purple, uh, 
uh, instead embraced a sort of destructive xeno uh, phobic attitude where only the Kashoan crystal can persist. Organic life must be destroyed. So the Klingons right now, little did they know it, are on the brink of an existential crisis of which they will be consumed and have imperiled the rest of the universe in, well, being consumed by very angry crystals. The Romulans have also been experimenting with dimensional technology because the two civil war powers have been trying to find an advantage over each other. And, well, if they can't outpace each other in real space, if they can't outpace each other in subspace, then they will outpace each other in hyperspace. The problem is that means you have two very desperate military powers chasing after breaking the barrier first rather than breaking it safely. So that leaves us with the Federation, who currently don't trust the Aldemona. And as of right now, I imagine even the group of you have a healthy uh, wariness of the Alcarn people. This is a wariness that has made my career interesting. Um, but I think that if anyone is going to convince the Alcarn uh, and Aldemona people to trust the Federation, it's this ship. I think that we have on this ship the capability diplomatically and philosophically to treat with them and convince them to induct the United Federation of Planets as a lesser power. What does that mean? Um, the Aldemona and Alcarn peoples are considered under galactic law greater powers. We are the defenders of galactic law. We are the uh, purveyors of technological enlightenment, etc., etc., etc. But lesser powers are gifted our technological abilities and support to carry out uh, and enforce galactic law. This also means that we gift them, as I said, we, we gift technological insights. And for the la for last couple centuries, we've been trying to observe which power we which powers we could induct as a lesser power. Um, and right now, I think we can push for the Federation to be that. Because my problem is right now that if... I don't think my counterpart within the Klingons is going to succeed in the next century. And we need them to succeed yesterday. I don't think my counterpart in the Roman Empire is going to succeed, given the state of the Civil War. And right now is one of the rare times where the Federation isn't at war with somebody, or isn't trying to destroy itself. And I think in this calm moment, we might be able to inject enlightenment and you chose us or it does make a certain amount of sense we've met you before yeah the Alcarans know this ship and I know your careers the benefits of I imagine you had uh, significant amounts of time to watch those careers develop as well, Admiral. I can't say I, ha I can uh, take too much credit for observing Lieutenant Ryloff. My counterpart in the Roman Empire did that for me, but they spoke well of you. They were observing a ranking soldier? With the understanding the Alcarans had a manifest of or a Oh, right. Listing of they our crew. Yeah, yes. they, they, they would have known to look out for uh, a right. ranking soldier matching your name and description. It saved my uh, counterpart a lot of time of having to sift through the various glowing reports of the Senate, senatorial families. As important as they are, and they are, uh, sometimes the rank and file can be lost when it comes to the Roman Empire. Or Republic, or whatever it ends up being. Not to make light of your your people's problem, but I'm not sure what to call them anymore. That is beyond my understanding, and I'll admit that ignorance. They are and simply will be Romulan. <laughs> he nods at that. I still don't understand why well, I'm I may here. not look favorably 
while while I may not look favorably on the precise actions of either the Dominion or the Tholian Assembly, their goals do not seem to be entirely at odds with your own. While they are both what insular, they have a fierce desire to survive. I'm pretty sure that's common with, with all sapient races. You don't get to ooh, be the dominant species on the planet if you don't want to survive. Some more than others, though, Lieutenant. Survival For some, it's integrated enough. culturally. Survival isn't enough for to save the galaxy from tyranny. Self-preservation uh, can lead... Uh, a focus or hyper-focus on, on self-preservation uh, can turn into capitulation to a strong to a perceived stronger power um, justly or not even the mighty Klingon Empire was brought to brought low by an invading alien species but it took a great amount of effort on their part over a thousand years ago to cast out their uh, conquerors unfortunately they became conquerors themselves but every species copes in different ways Who am I to judge one who has thrown off tyranny if that's the way they did it? Probably just nods. I still don't understand why I'm the diplom I'm gonna be the diplomat. <laughs> Surely there's better options. You've had a career of dealing with extraordinary circumstances being tempted with advancement of your career and prestige and even at one point uh, galact uh, interstellar dominion as I recall but these are things you have succumbed from time to time to your vices but in the whole you have sought to do the better thing for all <laughs> sides rather than whatever advances your interests not all Starfleet captains can say that for one uh, some are a little too concerned with how many pips are on their collar. My admiralty didn't come in until the last 50 years. And I've been with Starfleet for centuries. Um, that's because my rank wasn't really my concern. My rank, my concern was my duties. Um, you've also had an interesting career dealing with interstellar powers. You aren't cowed by incredible circumstances. The Quaqua Principality, uh, the Kashoan as a alien species. And you are a captain who knows well enough to trust his subordinates and to use them uh, to their best advantage and to your best advantage and the mission's best advantage, rather than being some cowboy diplomat with a phaser in pocket and strong speeches in your heart. Um, we need more than that. And I believe that you're one of the few Starfleet captains I think I can present to the Akarans that can exemplify what we're looking for in a lesser power officer. I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or an insult. I'd take it as both, frankly. <laughs> sure. So, uh, after all that, is there anything specific we're going to need to know when we get there? The one thing you need to know that has, as we learned on Veil, vale, is that I believe that Iconian technology is being discovered a little more rapidly, and my sus I don't have direct evidence to this, but I've been with Starfleet long enough to read between the lines of a situation and make some uh, educated guesses. But I don't think people are getting lucky in finding Iconian artifacts. I think someone's pointed them at the artifacts. It isn't us, because we guard that technology fiercely when we find it, and we tend to keep 
an agent like the Proctor Commander nearby to keep an eye on such things, to make sure we know who's getting at them. Um, but the thing is, not all, 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 the Iconian technology, when the rebellion happened, the Empire fell apart in a sudden fit. It just was gone. With an empire that technologically advanced, approaching that much, that close to singularity, uh, it just takes a single moment for everything to shatter, and that means all the technology, all their knowledge, basically shattered along with them. And they made no efforts to, to preserve that information. They did everything could, everything they could, to hide that information. But now, all of a sudden, all that very hard to find information, all that ancient technology, suddenly species are running into it, and it's a very specific type of technology, dimensional. Interaction or inter, uh, or dimensional travel. Veil vale was an attempt to do to create an Alcaran as a planet, a force that could perceive hyperspace and present itself as if it was a godly figure. Um, the problem was it basically lost its mind because it was hearing it was now open to the psyches of everyone on the planet, so it couldn't make sense of anything right it probably doesn't even know what an iconian built it in the first place the only reason i know is because i'm trained to look for it oh it, knows it knows uh, oh I, I, I kind of made it depressed and it punched the ship so you know yeah it wasn't fun Then the planet nearly blew up. I can write up. up a. Yeah. I can write up a full briefing on that, Admiral, if you require. Please do. Sir? So the reason I bring up that last bit is the fact that we do need to. I, normally, when it comes to a diplomatic interchange like this, I know the Federation loves its. Well, I can't begrudge it. It loves its bureaucracy. It loves to make sure that every box is ticked and every portion of its charter is upheld. And as Starfleet officers, we're all expected to uphold those things. But we need to put... We need to speed things up as much as we can. And we need... Even if they don't sign off today, and I doubt they will, um, even if they don't sign off right away, you need as much information as possible to deal with the growing Iconian threat. The, the Klingons are dealing with it with Starfleet help, as I understand it. It seems uh, one of my counterparts from the Core Worlds has deployed an intelligence asset in that region, so that will make life easier. And some secret... Uh, well, actually, you know what they are. Uh, it, the, that parapsychological group, uh, that secret society, what are they called? Oh, the the Watch. Those yeah, ones? That, yeah. Watch. The Watch. They apparently are working on it as well, so the Klingon issue is being up, uh, is being maintained for now. But Starfleet needs to have an advantage of some sort to deal with whatever's happening in the Shackleton, or what might happen in the Romulan Empire. I mean, if anything, if we can stabilize the Romulan situation, phrasing, I know that probably help with some of the issues. Maybe we can get back on friendly terms with them once they've been sorted out. Anyway. Was the Federation ever on friendly terms with the Empire? I do not recall. No, but we've, there's a difference between friendly terms and not shooting each other at first sight terms. I prefer friendly. I think the Dominion, the latter days of the Dominion War, were the last time we were at all, were in any uh, friendly terms, arguably, for, with the Empire. Yeah. Loosely, it was more convenience. Still, it was a bigger being, enemy. Still better than being shot at. Just circle back. Back a little bit. Wasn't there a er, uh, Klingon on uh, myth about, about how the Klingons went to ew, heaven and killed their gods, and now they're punching holes in heaven now? I think this is pretty much on brand for them. Not saying I justify their actions, ends, but just 
humorous observations. Yes, pointing out Klingons are doing Klingon things. Admiral, you mentioned the possibility of the Iconian Empire returning. Can you clarify? The Empire, the species of the Iconians is long gone, or the many hundreds of thousands of years. However, as you know through the science of replication and matter uh, uh, dissemination, um, you can create organic life from a file. You can undigitize someone. Um, that is one way the Iconians could come back. They could simply beam themselves back into existence, or they could try to create or reinstitute the original forms of the Alcaran or Aldemona people. Or they could inject themselves into the psyches of a suitable host species and rule as some other species, but still Iconian in mind. The thing is that that's why Iconian technology is so dangerous. It's because it isn't... I... Well, not just me. My people have been on guard for that sort of technology. And we're seeing a lot of Iconian's uh, advancements, which implies that, there, that there's Iconian influence um, within the various empires. That could lead to someone stumbling upon... I mean, it's one thing to find a better phaser or a better starship or something like that. It's a whole other thing if they accidentally turn on some cloning uh, facility or some digital upload facility and, all, and then suddenly we have the rise of the Iconian Empire. If the Iconian Empire ever gets momentum... That's it. The empires as they are right now cannot withstand a rise of the Iconian Empire. The only powers that are even close are the Dominion and the Borg. And that's assuming they united. And that, and we all know that wouldn't happen. So uh, all the Alpha Beta Quadrant powers united, maybe, but given the interstellar politics right now, I don't see that happening either. So better to get ahead of them and stop them from forming while we get take more time to help stabilize the galaxy. Well, there's also a different um, force in the shackles and expanse that could be messing around with things we don't want them to. That's my worry. That's why I've been out here for the last uh, seven years. No, I'm, I'm trying to f talking about the um, the breakaways. Oh, the Tripolity. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Tripolity did not take our benevolent uh, actions as what they are and instead took them for an attempt to rule the galaxy. They saw us as another authoritarian power to, up, to oppose. Which is why they've been filling their ships with holograms and fighting the Aldemona. It doesn't help that the Aldemana are not exactly the best of diplomats. That is not their role. That is not what they were created for. Yeah, we've noticed. But they're a group of people who, without one of your kind with them, basically are unsupervised in a section of space where... I'm guessing Iconian technology is a bit more prevalent? The Shackleton had, hides quite a few Iconian, uh, well, yeah. Iconian technologies. I hesitate to say planets because some of those planets don't exist anymore. We were, in some cases, we were very thorough in our orbital bombardment of certain worlds for exactly that reason, to destroy the technology. That's a, yeah, that's a worry for, we're going to have to figure out a different day. 
could it be possible yeah. that the Iconians imps themselves are somehow communicating with these people and leading them to release to build a bridge and it's back to our galaxy? That's very possible. Either through even through the simple art of time travel they could do that. The thing is time travel is very visible to the Federation. Federation gets time travel technology relatively actually we, they have it now, but the actual temporal fleet becomes a thing within a very near part of time. We're very close to the temporal fleet, temporally speaking. So doing any time what travel fleet? shenanigans don't worry about the temporal. It. Yeah. Think Starfleet, but time travel, and that is reducing it immensely. Um, but put it this way: if you time travel here and do any big moves in a time travel way, you it'd be like someone warping into near Earth. Uh, the Star Starfleet would notice you're you're too close. Um, well, that's not exactly accurate. It's more like warping into the edge of the Federation space, so more like Riza or something. Basically, yeah, basically a fleet to stop people from fucking around in the past. So, could they be? Could the economies be messing with us in time with time travel? Yes, but it would have to be small scale. That's my thing. The other way to do it is through hyperspace, but there are various species that can perceive in hyperspace, or even species that can sense it through sonics. They're a sort of What you would describe as uh, extrasensory perception, uh, this feeling that something's wrong. Same idea. If you do too much hyperspace travel or activity, it tends to attract the attention of people who can perceive it. It'd be like a loud drumming noise or a hum. The sort of thing one can't ignore very easily. Oh, so Or a feeling of impending danger. Trailblazer nods. Oh, something I wanted to ask since Veil. Vale. Um, are you able to describe what the Iconians looks like? Like, they've had various appearances. How about um, giant eyeballs with lots of eyeballs on them with um, sticky out bits? No, uh, that sounds like a um, a psi construct. Um, Think like an artificial intelligence, but it's purely thought-based. It's a sonic AI or sonic intelligence. Yeah, so it wasn't the thing that spoke to us then. That part I did see in your report. That's kind of what made me worried because sonic intelligence creation isn't a thing any power I know of, any power within the Alpha or Beta Quadrants is capable of. None of you can do this. Um, not even the Dominion could do this. Uh, they don't, and Borg can't because they have poor psionics. Which is to their detriment, but whatever works for them, I suppose. But that sound, they could be Iconian. Or they could be some other highly advanced species. Uh, they're, the Iconians are not the, the Alcarn and Zondemonans are not the last guardians of the technology. Some other species have either discovered Iconian technology and advanced rapidly, or they made those same discoveries independent of Iconian influence. But it is way too much of a convenience for me, for you to be investigating an Iconian weapon, and then suddenly you saw a sonic intelligence that threatened you. <laughs> there are very few powers I can think of that, that, we, that the Federation has encountered that would ever do that. The First Federation, maybe, but no one's bothered them ever since they told everyone to stay out, which is good. Well, plus myself and the commander talked to her being in hyperspace. So, you know, things happen. Mm. What happened to the good old days of just exploring? Funny thing about out exploring is eventually you find someone else else is out here too. Nicely. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't quite give you that answer. 
uh, I don't have my uh, philosophy, advanced philosophy of exploration course till... What? Hypothetical question. Right, right. Yeah, it, it wasn't really a question. It was just more of an, an annoyance. You're doing fine, cadet. You've mentioned the Borg several times, Admiral. What's the hmm. Alcarn and Aldemona stance on them? They have not risen to the level of being a galactic threat, and they are a possible ally should they ever realize what their true potential is. I'm sorry, what? That's what startles you. Probably just like sits back slightly. Is there something that uh, eludes you, Cadet? I, I mean, it's you know, he, he just bewilderingly looks at the captain and says, "The Borg, sir." Yeah, I heard him. Given in our recent history, we could have had that reaction to the Klingons, the Romulans, the any other species we have met in the galaxy at a certain point in history. Hell. Klingons, Romulans, and Borg, oh my. Andorians, Tellarites, Bolians, Humans, Vulcans. Right. Right. Uh... The Borg do have different connotations. Yeah, but... Well... I will say that the Borg have been more under the under the auspice of the Aldemona side of our uh, equation than on the Alcaran side. The Borg tend not to appreciate the nuance of covert infiltration. <laughs> no shit. So... It would seem difficult to infiltrate a hive. It was attempted, but the hive is the hive. It's, it results in disruptive influences that we don't think would be helpful to the Borg. Hmm. Well, let's just agree they're not viewed in the best light for now. not by Starfleet. Oh, by many of the species. Yes. No, it's, uh, anything else, Admiral? Oh, I stand for any questions or clarifications you any of you have. Any questions from the class? Do we have any insight on what type of power source Iconia technology e might be using? And if I have any insight on that, I might be able to ooh, think of ways to ooh, at least turn off their air technology from afar and prevent people from activating it. Oh, well, that's a Starfleet engineer for you. Faced with an overwhelming technological foe, you think of how you're able to overcome it and thinking it's possible. And the thing is, what worries me a little bit in an amusing sort of way is you're probably right. <clears throat> I mean, technology is fueled by some sort of power source. If you disconnect the power source, the technology doesn't work. Unless we're talking about wheels. Pretty sure if you take the wheels off. Or alternatively, you get to a level of complexity where power is completely integrated. You can't easily turn off person, Lieutenant. 
I mean, you can. That's called killing them, but that's not quite what we're going for. Well, it might be if we have to. I mean, it's also grand as love life. Sorry, sir. Love mind. <laughs> Give your GM a second, because I have to look that up. See, I, I assume that was actually the Admiral giggling then. <laughs> no, no, he he doesn't emote. This he doesn't laugh. Thing. Yeah, but his he eyes is, do. His eyes, his eyes flicker around. His eyes are probably <laughs> flickering, yeah. He doesn't partake in emoting. Well, he emotes in an alien way. That's more, it's more the point. So he, laughter isn't a thing he can, his species actually does. But show amusement is a thing. Um, power generation. Where the hell are you? Oh, the... oh there it is. There it is. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Uh -huh. This is the part where you don't agree with me. Um, although in, in reality, there's really only a uh, few different ways. Um, sorry, bye. The conventional way they use power is through complex means of matter-antimatter reaction. Um, so that would be a matter. That's something you're very familiar with. The what becomes a complication for you is when they're when they connect their when they talk about one of their larger facilities. I'm speaking of uh, station-based or planetary-based technologies. Those are tied into uh, uh, hyperspace power generation. They basically feed off of the energetic potential of existence beyond current reality. The way to disconnect that is to not attack the power source because you can't attack, well, you can sure. attack the higher layers of reality that tie everything into a cohesive whole. That's generally not a good idea for anyone involved. So it's about disconnecting that bridge, whatever that may be. Close the portal. Um, close basically the portal, close the valve. Yeah, basically shut off the uh, waterfall that they've they placed their, their uh, water wheel you know, underneath. More take the water wheel away from the water uh, from the waterfall. If you but disrupt the waterfall, you... well, the trick is finding out where that wheel is. But when it comes to starships and such, they use very advanced versions of uh, antimatter reaction. The problem with those isn't so much disrupting them. They're they're disrupted the same way any other matter antimatter reaction is. It's just, it's like the difference between um, an NX class ship trying to disrupt the energy distribution of the Achilles. There's a technological gap there between the two powers. But functionally, the principle is still the same. It's just. Uh, much more complex, much a lot more fail safes. Same principle, oh, just two hundred years eras of technological advancement, or in this case, over hundreds of thousands of years of technological advancement. They had a pro; they were on the brink of of, of uh, breaking singularity. Basically, at the point of, or one step short of preservers level. Exactly. Though there are some who theorize that they actually achieved that, I am I do not believe that is the case. I don't think they got to that they got to that point. We, they their their singularity event was us. They were shattered by their own technology. Okay, so if it's a ground based thing if it's a hyperspace ace generator I might be able to you know, jury rig a way of of disrupting that without disrupting any other power sources, such as as ourselves. But I would have to you know, draw up some um, plans to kind of see what's feasible and what uh, effective range that would be at. Which is one of the technologies I would advise you asking for your access uh, having access to if you're able to get into the main database of the Alcarin uh, vault then you'll have access to the various means and methods that the Iconians were able to use uh, when drawing power from hyperspace saves you a bit of time if you don't have to re uh, reinvent 
the wheel, so to speak. Well, fun thing, fun thing about our technology is that you don't necessarily have to know how how it works in order or to know how to break it. That is dangerously accurate, Lieutenant. <laughs> I just rather you didn't break it. I like reality the way it is. Uh, that's that's at Starfleet Engineers for you. Just stupid enough uh, to pull that off. Mm. Please don't break a higher dimensional realm, Lieutenant. <coughs> Look, if if you're desperate to do something, I'll give you something to do. Just don't start breaking layers of reality. I was gonna break layers of reality. I was gonna break the power generator, er, but. Any other questions? I'm sir. Not personally. I, uh, I'd like to ask you about who I'll be meeting in particular, but that's something we can do uh, before we actually get to Alcara. Yeah. So, not uh, diplomatically, you'll be speaking with uh, some of the the Grand Admiral of the Aldemona Migrant Fleet and the most serene of the Alcaran people. So, two of the twelve. Yes, the others are occupied with their duties. Okay. Uh, yeah, like that. Um. And if you can't impress those two, you're not going to impress the rest of them anyway. Well, no pressure. Thank you. Just laying out the stakes for you, Captain. <clears throat> I know the most annoying thing in the world for a captain is to be blindsided by your admiral. I'm trying not to do that as best as the law allows me. Uh, fair enough. Um, lieutenants, cadet, anything you'd like to ask the admiral? So, what do I need to be on the lookout for? Or is this more of a just, I, I can't talk about anything I see on those sensors? Uh, you, the only people you can talk to are the people in this room. Okay. Um, if you want to write a report that it, you are a Starfleet officer, it, under Galactic Law, it counts as a lesser power uh, learning information of its own accord and I am allowing the Article Zero to we're acting within the bounds of galactic laws the short answer um, so you can see these things you're allowed to scan these things you're even allowed to write about them but as a Starfleet Admiral I'm telling you it is not a very good idea to spread that information around and right. you want okay. to make it, so it, it, none it, of it diplomatically it. you don't want that getting around either <clears throat> got it so none of it understood Um, do Tetrions uh, interact with hyperspace, or are they a, a purely a subspace phenomenon? I, I don't know if they crossed over that barrier or not. Sometimes. It depends. Useful. Got it. I can... That is the most accurate answer I can give you, Lieutenant. Um... If you want to know more about it, you'll need to see. You'll need to look into the vaults on people who observe that particular interaction a lot more closely than I do. But let's just say that my experience as an Alcaran has left me with a very unique perspective on time travel and time travel related particles. Don't even get me started on chronotons. Okay, so if you take a graviton beam and just bounce it off the deflector dish. What? That's nonsense. I would do nothing. <laughs> I think no, he's I, making a joke. Yes. That, so is the GM. That, that's that's yeah. a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, saying that in character to the Admiral, though. <laughs> yeah. He gave you an in character answer. He's like, what? That's silly. It makes no sense what you just said. <laughs> We're here to talk about real science, damn it. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I 
the last thing I'll leave you with then, if there's no other questions, is that uh, for the away mission, uh, those who go down, uh, they need to be held to the highest of secrecy standards. All the data that is being gathered when you start scanning that place uh, will have, under treaty, will be bound to high-level command codes. So I know you don't, all of you are going to be running into um, the occasional high-level security report that you've had to go across your desk, but now basically every log that anyone makes on the ship that has anything to do with this planet has to go through the four of you before it ever gets to me. And then I have to clear it because it has to be information. It has to be within this information has to be controlled for the safety of the people on that planet and for the safety of our treaty. And as for you, cadet, I looked into your file. I know that you are smart enough to keep a secret. Yes. Yes, sir. And I would advise you to inform your chief of security if any of your cadets start getting inventive in the way they send reports back home uh okay um do you want me to talk to the chief of security trailblazer gives a look at ryloff and then gives a look at ben Lieutenant Ryloff is familiar with the, what I'm talking about. It's something he had to go through when he was an officer, except it's not a thing we normally do in Starfleet. When I was a ranker, I did not reach the position of officer within the Star Navy. I was part so you, of that. So you know what it's like to be uh, filling out those reports? That's the kind I need from the cadet. Cadets have a tendency to get very creative when it comes to achieving their graduation. Some are make great officers, some make great messes of themselves. We'll leave that to Lieutenant Rylov, but if they continue to try and be overly creative, I'll have a word with myself. I'll speak bluntly for you, cadet. I need you to be. A, I need you to spy on your fellow cadets. <laughs> he, 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 uh, gulps. Uh, uh he spy on them. Okay. Uh, well, what, what do you need me to to, to look out for? To them trying to the breach the information quarantine. To ensure they are doing nothing to hasten or accentuate their graduation while we're here, essentially. And the most likely cause for that is information regarding where we are and what we're doing. Okay. Uh... And especially when it comes to Starfleet cadets, if we're hiding something from them, they're just going to take that as a challenge to find out what. Okay. I mean, I'll... Uh, I'll see what I can do. But I mean... You know, I I don't quite have the access that you know the chief of security would to lessen in the intelligence work, cadet. Sometimes, for all the technology and all the uh, bureaucracy you have at your power, sometimes one well-placed agent is enough. You have access that none of us have. You're the same rank as they are. You know these people. You know when they act strange to myself or Captain Penn, their cadet so-and-so and cadet so-and-so. We don't know them on a personal level. We don't know uh, when they're having a bad day or a good day. We just know what the reports tell us. And you know them as people. Right. Well, I'll keep my ears, my eyes, and he sort of a uh... He uncomfortably grasps his left arm with his right arm, my mind open. If it ever comes down to them challenging you on the matter, direct them to Lieutenant Ryloff. And 
Lord. Okay. Lieutenant Raloff can decide whether or not I need to be involved or not. Frankly, when it comes to keeping secrets like this, it's better to manage this on a smaller scale rather than having the big scary admiral walk into the room to solve the problem. If I solve the problem, I'm ending this cadet, those poor cadets' careers, and I don't want to do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, right. I can. I can do this. Yeah. I. 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 I can do this, and you. I won't even. <laughs> I won't even suggest that anyone roll. Uh, Ven looks like. He looks like he's turning green. Hey, is a bleeding heart after all? Mm. Hey, mm-hmm. cadet. Poker face. And you're not being asked to go around corners and hide from them. Simply, if they do something as another cadet, they're likely to say it around you. Or even show you. Okay. It's okay. not stalk them to their quarters and watch. It is, as a member of that group, you will know more than I will. And I have no particular desire to follow cadets around the ship all day, just to be sure. I have other duties to attend. Right, right, right. Of, of, of course. Okay, I can... can I can do that. Uh, well, I believe that's it, Admiral. All right. To your duties, everyone. Oh, would you like that briefing on the specific occurrences on Bail Admiral? Sorry, say that again? Uh, like, like, as Thrallix is standing up, just to like make clear it's not part of the meeting, it's just like, uh, when would you like my report on the specific occurrences on Bail Admiral? Uh, as soon as you're able. Yes, sir. Oh, um, Lieutenant Allen? Yes, sir. If you'll come with me to my quarters, um, I've got something I would like to work on, but don't really have the time to. Something you might be interested in. Of course, sir. Uh, everyone dismissed. Thralic, would you like to spend a threat for a hint? Yes, sir. Uh, Thralic is standing up as everybody is exiting the room. And then grips the back of the chair and locks eyes with the Admiral briefly. And then we'll glance over and after Ryolov and Ben have departed. No, oh, isn't like looks over like they're waiting for them to leave. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was double checking that wasn't the looking like, please stay. It's like, no, never mind, something else. Okay. <laughs> no. No, it's the. I'll have to make that. sure the room is cleared. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what momentum is generated by Trailblazer? <clears throat> do, 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 do. Something just happened, Admiral. Something is terribly wrong on Okara. How do you know this? I know it. I... Commander, you're a Starfleet officer. I'm going to need a bit more than that. Sir... When I returned to 
and Doria, um, before we set out on this voyage, I consulted with some family about strange sensations and visions that I'd experienced. I found out that it was perhaps a pause slightly. Inheritance of the clan to your Anar blooded. He tilts his head and his eyes kind of calm, like he's examining you closely. Yes. Hmm. Not a thing your family would advertise but that also especially means... not given my investigations of genealogical records show this would have been significantly before the last two centuries before the reconciliation sir uh the admiral's attempting an in a difficulty three task he has uh target number of 12 he does not he he does have a focus would you like him to buy any uh, spend any threat for additional dice they yeah, they care about threat versus momentum um it's up to you guys he's, he this is a, a helpful npc doing something so yeah, you, you're deciding how like. spending resources I'd say definitely at least you can spend that momentum that he generated. Spend, spend <laughs> the momentum. Um, do we want to give him four dice? Uh, if, yeah, if you want to take an extra like two threat, go for four. it. Yeah, let's go for it. So he's rolling Living four dice. On the edge. He has a focus. Aiming for dip three. He got it. He Trailblazer's eyes start swirling in place for a second as he seems to be staring off. Like a, he has like a thousand mile stare. Well, it's hard to say that when someone has mercurial eyes, but you get that feeling that he's looking at something that isn't here. Yeah. He then blinks his eyes. Red alert. All staff to the bridge to battle stations, and he strides for the. Turbo lift doesn't even look at you, Thrall. He just strides away. Like yeah, no, I just, you know, run right after him. Get into the bridge. Walk into Pin's office. What's that? Yeah, then to bridge. Uh. Can't even have nice, peaceful conversations anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Is the Admiral going for the command chair? Yep. All right. Oh, he strides into it like it's natural. Um, I'll come in at the same elevator. We'll vault over the uh, like divider and <laughs> take her chair. I'm just going to sit on the banister next to him. Uh, I'm going to internal systems. It's tall. Move. Go over this way. Uh, I forget. What are these two as terminals as... up at the back? Uh, they're uh, auxiliary panels, so they can okay. be used. They can be used as a secondary of anything else on the bridge. Got it. Well, primarily as security captain. oversight and internal because they're the ones that only have one mm -hmm. console. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. As soon as the captain is on the bridge, I will yield um, my seat for him. No, no, the command has been altered. Pen doesn't care. That's your seat sitting it. Not, not how Thrallic works, but all right. Uh, <laughs> she will go to do that, and then after Pen waves her back, she'll step back down. <laughs> Lieutenant Arlen, 
I need you to redline the engines for as much power as you can get. I wanted this thing to move so fast that you're going to be asking me for structural integrity reports later. I want to be where we need to be yesterday. Aye, sir. We could technically right. do that. Yep. Uh, let's redline I mean, the engines. Um, Actually, sorry. Uh, I'm going to walk back that, that dialogue. I just realized he did, he did that wrong. He would say to pend... Get this shit, get Lieutenant Ireland to redline the engines. I need this thing to go as fast as possible because chain of command matters still, even though he's in the command chair. It's not his ship, it's Penn's ship. He's just the admiral. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. So, Trailblazer is um, what's the thing when a commander tells directing. you directing? He's directing yeah. Penn to direct somebody else. Okay, then as I'm being directed, I will direct the lieutenant. <laughs> Wait, so are there gonna be two? To direct change. Yeah. The benefit of an admiral stepping on the bridge, like, oh no no, double direct Prepare. time. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, Lieutenant Prepare Allen. for hyperspace. Prepare yeah. for hyperspace. Prepare for hyperspace. Lieutenant Allen. Yeah. We went to black. Sorry. I was gonna say prepare ship for <laughs> ludicrous speed. Yep. Yes. Lieutenant Allen. Yes, sir. I want all non-essential systems transferred to the engines. Uh, and Lieutenant Shashre, be ready to increase speed to Alcara as soon as ready. Understood? Aye, sir. Um, okay. Hey, I was told to ew, go hard. I'm going going hard. Uh, let's go past the red line in difficulty four. Well, I said okay. all non-essential systems. We can go to five if you want. Yeah, you're at red alert. He's re he's willing for this thing. He's willing for people to get hurt to get there faster. <laughs> All right, Jeff five. Let's go. Worst thing happen, we br we break the ship. Don't oh, worry. My... We have we have one medical room. It'll be fine. It... Um, t t with luck and practice, there are no limits, especially right now. Yep. All right, that's my value. Um. Focus and tinkering. As I'm yeah. massaging the uh, uh, system to make it go faster. And I also have the Cocker Medal of Ex Excellence. So I spend a t point of determination on my focus of tinkering. I get two uses of my determination instead of just one. <laughs> I'm going in. Uh, take five threat. Uh, well, you've already bought two dice, so you could only buy the third one with three. Huh? Um, I don't think you can buy two dice with determination in a single roll. Yeah, yeah. So I have one. It's got so, one for like a so reroll or something. Case, yeah, uh, I save one for a reroll. Is that how that works? Or do I just have like two points of determination spent you've, on this? You've cr you've created yeah. an you've, you've created an advantage is what you've done. Okay. Because it, that it's works. Two, it, you activated it twice is what you've done. So you get the benefit that you were aiming for, which was getting a free one, an auto success. But there's a the secondary one is usually like an extra action, creating a complication, creating an advantage, something like that. Let's okay. create an advantage with that. Um. But yeah, five five threat. I'm rolling all four of my dice. Almost and... the advantage, because that does stick with the scene. Um, tr 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 in advantage is that I have have a secondary area heat bleed offs off built into the uh, nacelles to uh, bleed off any any extra heat that might come um, from this, and hopefully prevents a uh, blowout. Got it. Uh, so diff four now. Yep. Game for um, diff five, but you've gotten one free hit so far, plus two more. Do so. do I have any traits that I, I could apply? Oh. I mean, you know what the role um, is, so you know what your traits are. Married just gives you increases the difficulty because married people are bad at engineering. No, um, <laughs> no. That's true. Can't argue with that. 
Uh, it's, I it's, will it's, increase your complication range to two because you are indecisive. Yep, that's that's why I asked. <laughs> um, uh, could I invoke limit pusher to, to lower the diff? You or can to cancel that. So that puts it down to difficulty three. Um. That's gonna be it for now. All right, I, 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 yep. I'm throwing everything I got at this, including the kitchen sink. Donk. I'll just use my metal and make mine a crit. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight on a diff three. Yep. Um, the ship does not help with this because I'm telling the ship to do things that it's not comfortable with. Yep. So, good news, we generate five bonus momentum on engine rolls. Bad news is engine rolls now have a complication of five. Oh. Um, considering yeah. the person who flies the ship's got something to deal with that, we should be fine. Yeah. Plus <coughs> momentum just just a squash and I do have have a bleed off to prevent a blowout if need be. Yeah. So they'll they'll force my complication to be something else because of that advantage. But yeah. That's how I'll treat that. Uh, da, 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 da. Unless you spend to make it specifically that. <laughs> K pasta, why is it not loading? Uh, okay. Sorry. He's gonna give it. He's gonna give another order. But I forgot what it was, and I need to pull up my thing. <laughs> well, Pend also send that same order for Lieutenant Shreya to once that's ready to go at maximum speed possible to Alcara. All right. I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. Lieutenant Shreya. With every ounce of speed we've got to Alcara. All right, this is going to be control plus con difficulty of five, assisted by engines plus con. Fun. Complication five. Con five, yeah. Because this is supposed to be something that should only take a couple days. He, the way he's gotten this to be redlined, it's you're going to get there like within the hour, which is doable, but uh, if she rolls complications, you're getting, the ship's taking breaches. I, I hold my breath and knock on, on my console three times. Yeah, don't worry that about it. Your console's not made of wood. The, there's there's a there, little patch just... that's just wood. <laughs> so you can do that. Uh, <laughs> Specifically installed for engineers, basically. <laughs> you knock on the wood. Determination spend. Yeah. Uh, I trust my captain's orders. Yep. Uh, spend. The other reason the tra trailblazer made sure to do it through you is like, <laughs> yeah. he knows how this ship works. <laughs> uh, focus in helm control. Kind of makes sense. Yep. And I'll spend. Is it two? Yeah, I'll just spend two momentum. She has a reroll. So that's five. And because of her talent, uh, the ship crits. So that's number two. So and I three, believe four, five. Yeah. So yeah, and two because of it for the ships. So that's seven hits, and we gained five bonus from the engines. So we succeeded. So we can and quash that. No, no, we, uh, well, that was a reroll. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that was a full reroll. Okay, cool. Uh, the Admiral's spending two of that momentum to have the ship appear at a, a very precise point in the star system. 
Sounds good. As he starts just giving right. a particular set of coordinates as you're warping, and she sure just enters it in. Well, he gives it to a pen to give it to her, because that's the hierarchy. <laughs> Any other advantages? Someone with... respects the hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't have to respect down. <laughs> yes, you do. That's part of the hierarchy. <laughs> hierarchy goes in both directions. Not on this yeah. ship. <laughs> the chain of command that I'm going to beat you with. <laughs> hey, hey, Corbinian, is yeah. is the ship vibrating? So if you hold, hold open your mouth, it goes. Uh... Uh, uh, any more advantages people can think of? Uh, can we spend two to it less of a power drain? Doesn't matter. But like, yeah. Spend, uh, actually, yes. Sorry. Yeah, no. You you could spend two of that to create the advantage that you'll uh, you won't use. You won't be at as little power as you would normally be at the end of a warp. Because this is basically a warp. T this is going to eat up all ten of your power. Normally. Oh, do you guys have improved warp drive by the way? I uh, don't believe so. No. You do not. That's Varder's ship that has that. Hehe. <laughs> uh, because it's a saber. <laughs> Saber's pretty. Um, Obrits are better, but whatever. Um, <laughs> for for You're the one that gave me the saber. <laughs> you could have objected. Um, plus Oberth is a security vessel. I don't know. As much as I want that to be true, that would have been the security <laughs> intelligence vessel would be the most underestimated but thing as, in existence. As an the war can do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You should totally <laughs> have new. Oberth. We're just undercover intelligence the whole time. vessels. <clears throat> yeah. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, but for two of that momentum, uh, you will retain two power as you come into the system. For each additional momentum, you retain that much more power. Uh, the other one into it. Yeah, well, I say we could pump, pump some more into it. Um, sure. let's get our total power up to five. That's a good, good place to start. So let's add two more to it. Uh, just gonna lean into Trailblazer and quietly. Uh, care to explain? Captain, I'm gonna need the shields to be modulated at the highest frequency possible. Once we hit the outer edge of that system, we're gonna run into the security system, and that's gonna bleed our shields dry and rip the ship apart. Also, there's likely hostiles in the system, so be ready for hostile action. And he gives you a, he looks at you and then he like expecting you to start relaying his orders as he starts and then he looks down at his chair to type at something. Like that's his answer. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Rylov. So please modulate the shields to I'm guessing the frequency you're about to receive. And, and the frequency appears on your screen. <laughs> and make sure all armaments are readied for use. Understood, sir. Prepping quantum torpedoes. Actually, we don't even have quantums. We've got whatever the fuck experimental thing we have. Are they experimental quantums? Uh, they're quantum phase yeah. torpedoes. Quantum phase torpedoes. Those are experimental right. quantums, though. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, basically, minor to prep those and modulate the shields. Uh, prep them for cloak there, Lieutenant. Uh, that is dependent upon range of which they are fired. That is a factor of their experimentality. You can't set it to that. Negative. I'm sorry I haven't figured out every aspect of phased technology. If we fired the torpedoes at extreme range, they would be cloaked. Be advised, Khan. That's the range I need. <laughs> I can make that shot. Um, <laughs> okay, so what am I looking at for a modulate here? Um, control plus security. <laughs> Difficulty is up to three because of what he's asking you to do. This will drain one of your power. Assisted by structure plus engineering. 
holy shit, this is going to be the first time we fired them. Yep. I don't, yeah. I don't think paranoid actually triggers here, does it? No. This is just uh, me it does, doing actually, my Actually, I take that back. It would, it would increase your comp range. Okay. That makes total sense. How's this the first time we fired them? We've decided against firing them at close range, where they will inflict significant casualties amongst the crew you know, of opposing <laughs> vessels. We've, we've not fired them at any range. Yeah, I know, but most of the time we've considered firing those in close range. That's why. Yeah. Um, so Look, I've already planet plan it with phaser cannons. So. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so, um, milestone from number nine: declare the past, diagnose the present, which is tactics and strategy <laughs> was being applied. I believe the modulation of appropriate shielding and prepping of weaponry for a specific ranged engagement meets that. And um, mission directive, which are. Did we pin those ever? Uh, never them heard no. of <laughs> I've got them pinned somewhere. No, just need to keep scroll up. Because I posted no, them last I've, session I've as well. I've got them recorded myself. That's what I mean. I'm pretty sure. Get, Get to the Alcara system, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if we need the shields up in this manner to survive reaching the Alcara system, then there we go. So... Uh, 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 the, de the decoration of gallantry is the roll dice, see what you get, right? That's the right one. I believe so. For the, uh, for the threats. I'll check. Uh, decoration of gallantry is half damage. Half damage, never mind, wrong one. It's the common <laughs> thing. There's, uh, there's two of them that have the exact same name, yeah. <laughs> basically. Citation for conspicuous gallantry is the. <laughs> oh, actually, hey, that comp range, I got it wrong. Oh. Yeah, it's a it's citation. Because it's redlined. The shields aren't redlined. But the engines are. Yeah. And that's where you get oh. the power for your shield modulation. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, inscrutable doesn't help me because my own expressions don't matter. Um. Oh, actually, that makes it comp six because you added one for paranoia. Yeah. Oh no, okay. that's, that's structure engineering, that's not engines. Oh, it's a structure, you're right. Oh god, it scared me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. One Jesus, of us is paying two. fucking attention. And defector oh. probably doesn't come into play here because it's not Romulan shielding. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. <sighs> I'll get myself a Romulan ship, don't worry. And, uh. Let's talk to the Tripaldi, they have a couple. Yeah, Maybe exactly. Willingly, um, clearly, once the crew's gone. Um, Complete with holographic crew. I'll spend... Three momentum and two threat, because I'm not giving you a ton of threat, goddammit. How much threat again, sorry? Two. two. And the ship. Six, seven, eight. Um, I don't know the will of Varder. I mean, I do know the will of Varder. I am, I, duh, fuck. <laughs> you're, <laughs> no you're technically right, love. Go away. Uh, so that's ten. So we gain seven. I am he, and he is me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. Do you wish to dump any additional momentum into gaining more resistance? Because getting the roll at all increases your resistance by one. So you're at plus we one dump uh, seven in into it? Sure, fuck it. Considering it's yeah. more likely going to hit us back with something. Yeah, I would rather not have um, our shield collapse going through a defense grid. Yeah. That's eight resistance on top of our eight resistance. 
Whoops, I, got, I did the math wrong when I wrote it down. Whoopsies. 16 resistance. I mean, having 8 resistance is a joke in the first place, but 16 is just terrible. Yes. 16, you're, you're, you're as strong as a, as a space station. For one hit. Yeah. Well, it could be more than one hit. They have to do more than 16 damage. Yeah. If they have enough threat. No, um... It's true. Technically... <laughs> Captain, the minute we get into system, we're going to need to start scanning for cloaked ships in advance. So I need in the computer programmed a anti-cloak uh, parameter uh, trailblazer alpha 2 being entered into the computer. Cadet Van, you're about to receive instructions. Please follow. Yes. Also, while you're at it, get some pro... Sometimes proximity is going to matter, and the place we I put us in the system is going to help. But we may be encountering rather clever opponents, so be ready to pepper the entire system with probes. Uh, any particular probe deployment pattern? I want I want to be able to walk from uh, one end of the system to the other without getting my feet on uh, into space for longer than a second. How's that, uh, cadet? The cadet just looks back for a second, like. When you look back at him, his eyes are turbulent, like they're boiling. Trailblazer's pissed. Not at you, he's just in a yeah. very angry mood, and he's being kind of snippy. Yeah. Van just looks back at his terminal and says, Aye, sir. And Van is going to launch a bunch of probes. Well, prepare to launch a bunch of them. You haven't gotten there yet. Or, or prepare to launch a bunch of probes. Uh, Control plus science. Difficulty. It was going to be diff two, and then he made it harder, so they put it up to diff three. Sensors plus sensors or structure. You can call that because he did. He got you basically to do both plus science. Science. There we go. Okay. Um. Is it difficulty three? Okay. Take three threat. Okay. Is it sensors uh, or structure? Uh, your choice. Sensor, or, or, oh. Structure is better by one. Okay, uh, that just means I don't get a focus. Oh, I'll use the sensors then, easy enough. Yeah. Uh, control science. Yeah. And you got a hit anyway. Uh, so that's five hits, two momentum. Uh, oh, is that for the probes? Uh, I think so, yeah. That covers you, okay. you're having a sensor sweep ready to go at a moment's notice and firing the probes as a map. He's basically got you to fire every probe you have into, into the system and basically blanketing the entire system. <laughs> Uh, this is not Star Trek regulation, by the way. Uh, that, that is way overkill. I, I was but. gonna say. Uh, so, have I just completely used up our our probe complement? Yep. Hope you don't lose them. All right. Uh, we have deployed our entire probe complement, sir. Will. We will once we get there, cadet. Don't fire them now. We're still at work. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, entire probe complement is prepared to be. Uh, deployed in pattern thick three uh, maximum. Sp wow! And, like he looks, at, he looks at it. It's like th th this is a this is a spread pattern that wasn't expecting to have this many probes put into it. Like it's a <laughs> like it's a pattern. The computer's like, are you sure? Yes, computer, come up, sure. probably. <laughs> yeah, like. Can I... Are you searching for someone's lost contact list? Yeah. That's how you do it. <laughs> um, considering my interactions with Trailblazer and the Proctor Commander, can I tell he's boiling over from his eyes? Uh, Insight Command, difficulty 2. Even without rolling, you can tell he's mad. Like You know enough about his species that that's, this is him fuming. Yeah. Well, not just fuming, he's angry. 
Uh, composure. If he was human, he'd be shouting yeah. while he was talking. But he's Elkar, and he can't emote like that. Would you allow composure? Because I'm basically trying to gauge his composure. Yeah. Uh, take a threat. Yeah, two momentum generated. Um, he is furious, um, but he's also very, very scared. Um, and there's this almost there's this seething desperation to his anger um, that he's just barely keeping it together. Can I literally like go up right next to him and lean close enough? Just for a whisper. Uh, put my hand on his arm. Uh, calm the storm. I'll follow what you need need us to do. Just so you're clearly stressed. We'll help. Presence command difficulty two. Uh. Determination spent. Might as well. Uh, will you allow Directive 2? Uh, I'll actually allow Directive 3 in this case. Fair enough. Do any of my traits apply? Probably not like Nanite Tactics wouldn't, but you know. Yes, uh, Tiger of Narendra applies here. Brings down your difficulty by one. He trusts your judgment. And, uh, I'll give you another. Th uh, I'll give you a threat and a momentum. So we gained four. His eyes are mere stop bubbling over in appearance, and they seem to just be simmering. He just kind of nods at you, he kinda, and he gives you a light shove on the arm to to stand back. But you get the sense off him that he gets it. He's like, "Yeah, I see you. I understand." Yeah, Calm me down. <laughs> I'll happily jump back on the banister and let him take point. Arlen, engine status. What's our power level? Over 9,000! No. <laughs> oh, it's author still BRB. Uh, and so, yes. Katal will answer then. Yep. Uh, we are about 40%, Admiral. Once the lieutenant's free, we're gonna you're gonna likely need more power there, Captain Pend, so be ready for that. Expect a shootout the minute we get there. Understood. Commander Thrallic? Yes, sir. Call up every hoplite you have and recall anyone who's on standby duty. I want them with type threes and full armament. Prepare for invasion. Full deployment, yes, sir. You'll likely wish to co uh, co uh, collude with Captain Penn and Lieutenant Ryloff to grab as much security as we can, as the Achilles can lose. We need as many phasers as possible. Can you just at least inform us of the enemy? Not at this time, Captain. But whatever it is, it is of overwhelming force. And we're the only ship that's going to be answering for the next... Oh, I'm going to guess the next 30 minutes to an hour, given our luck. Uh, Which is I'm... more than enough time for this entire ship and everyone aboard to be killed. So let's not bandy around that particular bit of uh, information and just assume we're going to win for now. Will allied forces be recognizable if any are present? Sorry for uniforms will be recognized as allied. 
from us. Plus they know the Achilles is on their way anyway. How will we determine allied? If we do they'll, not know they'll, they'll, they'll have the same... Uh, they're, the, they're either Alcar or Aldemona on that planet. Anyone who is not uh, from the Achilles or from my species is to be shot on sight. Yes, sir. Standard stun order. Trailblazer just kind of <sighs> takes a breath like he's about Negative, to say Lieutenant. Standard Starfleet procedures when engaging the enemy. I, Lieutenant. <clears throat> uh, Admiral, do you, wish, Admiral, do you wish to lead from the bridge? You may need to take command of the bridge here in a moment, depending if we're being shot at or not. The reason if why we're being shot at, then we'll need to stay together. But if everything cools down, then we can operate separately. For now, we both need to stay the bridge. Well, the reason why you don't I know what's the kind of things we face normally. <clears throat> if. Uh... We're deplo deploying all hoplites. That's technically is me as well. So if required, I will surrender the bridge to you. Gear up and be ready. But get back to the bridge until I deploy you. Understood. I'll head off to... He's just been, you know, off to the side with the security <laughs> department figuring out, you know, who all she's pulling from security. Yeah. And I'm just going to head to my quarters and get me get me on shit. Yep. Presence command difficulty of three. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Presence command or security because the uh, assisted by communications plus command or security. All right. Hold on. No, I'm wrong. It's weapons. I have it wrong entirely. Do, 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 do. Presence plus command or security. Difficulty three, assisted by weapons plus command or security to basically mobilize all the hoplites and whatever security you can spare to be a invading for invasion force, as Trailblazer put it. It's basically an army of the Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is one of the few ships that can realistically field that, actually. So, yeah. One of the few Federation um, ships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only yes. other ship that, uh, that would do this normally be like in an expedition class. Like an expedition. Um... And a oh, the big Sovereign so class. There oh, so go. Sovereign. Yeah. And even with a Sovereign, you're, you're landing regular security then. Yeah. Um, all right. Presence, command, uh, strategy and tactics focus. Yes. All right. I'm going to go present security. Um, one momentum for... Actually, three momentum for four dice here. Uh, using the trait of Hoplite Commander. Yep. Trait of Relentless. Yep. Do I have a reason to pick on you? Hold on. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't, I don't know, have do a whole you? Lot of negative, really. Oh no, your your list is way shorter now. Because oh right, we we collected them. That's why. Yeah. Uh No, this works. You're good. Cool. Uh, rolling four. Oh ship. Please ship. Why must you do this to me? Why? Um. Uh, spend due to quash. Would Ryloff wish to assist with this role? I certainly can. I did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, uh, you have mobilized every security officer you have. Um, and 
those who are hoplites are armed, pardon me, armed with type three phasers as well as body armor. And shields. And shields. And shields. <laughs> and shields. Yep. Yeah. Wow. They so, are fully tactically kitted out. Like... Type three, that's the phaser rifles, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I'm, yep. I'm just making sure I've got it up on my sheet because I've not used one in a while. <laughs> I a bit, think actually. I need to add it to my sheet too, actually, because I'll I also have to get up for that. Can I say like my resistance? What's resistance with it? Armor and shield. Uh, four plus two, uh, so six. Holy shit! But you can lose the shield fairly quickly. Yeah, so yeah. you can drop down to two if you get it at a uh, thing. Actually, I should mark. Uh, uh... Yeah, I wasn't expecting us to literally invade the system we're going to, but... It's liberating, yeah, thank either. you very much. <laughs> we're the British! No, we're <laughs> oh. coming here to meet an allied power that seems to be under threat. That is liberation. Yeah, we're going to stick a flag in the ground and say we've liberated it. Not have as you can say about it. <laughs> Stay off my <laughs> world, damn you. Oof. We had a flag first. It was uncultured we, and therefore needed to be liberated. Um, we learned the lessons the of flags call. long ago. No. Wow. <laughs> Arlen, do we have you back? Doesn't nope. sound like it. No. Nope. I mean, he has like, died. Uh, Katal <laughs> or Ven or Zef could do it. I know Zef would probably be best for it. Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll take it on the chin for now. Um, so, first off, constructing a hazard. As, actually, first, I'm sorry. Ven, you get, to, you get to do something before this hazard happens. Reason. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's not reason. I'm full of crap. Insight plus science. Difficulty five. Assisted by, oh, sorry, four, because you did some prepping ahead of time. Um... Sensors plus science. Uh, it's an inside science difficulty four, assisted by sensor science. Uh, then you're kind of you are rapidly approaching the Alcar system uh, as fast as a starship can do without going to warp ten. Um, one thing I can tell you for free is that this ship is. Uh, if the shields weren't up, it probably would have shaken itself apart or rammed into something and blew a hole, clean hole through it. So yeah, you're in mortal danger right now. Um, that aside, danger. um, you're seeing you're gonna start making this insight is you making some educated guesses about what your that defense field that Trailblazer was talking about. You haven't you don't quite see it clearly on the sensors because you're moving way too fast and it is way too far away or too close, depending on your point of view. So you kind of have to make a lot of guesses before you even get to it. But it's only did four because you did some prep work for sensor stuff earlier. Aha! Guess what? Testing a theory. Theory into practice. Yep. That brings uh, my dice pool up to three. Difficulty down. Uh, difficulty down to three. Yep. Uh, I'm spending two momentum for a fourth die. Focus in sensor operations. Insight science. I'm gonna re-roll that. Zero. Uh, that's five hits. Six hits. So uh, we get that two momentum back. Or no, we get three momentum because the difficulty was three. <laughs> do, do, do. Okay, so you get to say something before you hit that barrier. Um, you may, or do something. You you have time. Let's put it that way, rather than me just saying this is how much damage you're taking. It's like yeah, you you get to see what the admiral was so worried about uh -oh. before you hit it. <laughs> okay, so we need to do a power regeneration roll like yesterday. Yes. Well, hang on, and then let's see. Let's see what I what 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 did we what what do I see on my sensors? Yeah. Oh, let's see. Oops, I got that 
cards. Sorry. Oh, Jesus, you're doing a big spent. And I was, what, 23 down to 9? Oh, no! It's spicy, that's for sure. That's a... That's a, uh... That's, that's an owie waiting to happen. That's a spicy hazard. Oh, um... <laughs> I'm in danger! Wow. God, why do you hate us? <laughs> Yo, whoa. Whoa. That is what he's just warping you into at warp speed. Huh? We should have uh, pumped even more into resistance, shouldn't we? So then, that's Do you, do you that... need a hug? Is that is that what's going on here? Is this a cry for help? <laughs> I mean, what what... What is that, though? Like, uh, what, is... Is, what you're approaching appears to be a... At first, it just looks like a, a big nip, a big ion storm or something, but I don't know. Trailblazer made a big deal out of it. So you, you make some... You decide to dig in a little more. You know, you're a go-getter. You're top of your class. You're going to ask more questions. You keep looking and keep looking. And if you're trying to think of some theoretical ways that one could make a field like that. And he did talk about like hyperspace and stuff like that and technology that isn't normally possible for other species. So you start doing like wild harebrained things and Hey, you found it. Uh, so that is a hyperspace particle shield, which essentially what's going to happen is when the ship hits that thing, at, if you're going like at impulse or maneuvering speed, you're fine. You'll get, you'll scratch your hull, but you'd be okay. But if you're coming through it at uh, warp 9.9 .9 repeating, it's like throwing a ball of mozzarella, or firing a ball of mozzarella out of a cannon at a cheese grater. This thing's going to oh. shred the ship into pieces. <laughs> oh, um, so, so so our sophomore, our engineering project, got it. <laughs> uh, uh, Basically, it's like because you're going at a certain speed, and this thing's at another layer of reality. So the shield frequency that he's given has basically done has basically given a bit of armor to that ball of mozzarella. But you're still a very squishy ball of reality that that thing can shred. If it if it gets to that armor, uh, that those breaches are going to start hitting people, like crew people, people on the ship are going to die if the shields fail, or assuming the ship does doesn't get shredded into pieces in the first place. Sir, I'm detecting a massive, uh, massive energy shield ahead. If we make contact with it, it could tear the ship apart. Maintain course, Captain Pend. It's all the uh, Admiral says. Captain Pend's on the bridge. You're on the bridge. No, don't worry, you're on the bridge just in time to overhear the report. Oh, lovely. What about a brief de-warp and impulse through? That could give too much warning to whatever force we're dealing with. I think hitting in a, a barrier at, at warp speed would also give them a warning to our presence. How do we get there fast enough, Lieutenant? Besides, if they want to warp away from us, they have to warp right back through the way they came in. If we jump in on top of them, wow. then they're going to see us, cannons and torpedoes ready, and if they want to warp away, they're free to try. Uh, so, so, uh, I would like to spend my free question. Sure. <laughs> um, is this a a thing where if we hit it, it is it is going to do that much damage to us? Or is yeah. this a, we approach it, we make a check, and maybe avoid some of it. 
or or is it just uh, if 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 you if the idea presented earlier of slow down and then slowly go through it is the way you safely move through it. You're not supposed to warp through a hyperspace barrier like this. It is intensely dangerous. You're now you now know this is an incredibly dangerous thing to be doing. It's like warping into orbit over Earth. Like you can do it, but it's so dangerous, and the margin of error is so slim that if you screw up, <laughs> there's a lot of consequences. Right, but the, the milliseconds, the milliseconds you get there are tactically gold. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm just gonna look at Trailblazer and hope he catches me eye and just give him that look of. Is this the plan of action? Maintain course, Captain. Con, maintain course. Uh, pend, I will give you, and this is, I'm going to spend two because this does make Trailblazer's life harder. Insight plus command difficulty of one for pend. I'll give you a threat. Um, if he's lucky, you won't make it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, composure? Uh, yeah, I'd take it here. I mean, I've got others if they'd fit better, like strategy and tactics. Let me take a look. That's Strat and Tack, though. Um... Mental prowess or composure would apply here. Uh, I got mental. And I'll fish because I'm funny. Well, you gained the momentum. Um, so. You are the captain of the ship. He is the admiral, but th this is your ship and your crew. Um. If Penn thinks, as a captain of the ship, that the Admiral is unjustly imperiling the ship, he is within his rights to oppose the Admiral's orders and, cor and correct him. Um, the gamble here is, if you're, if you're right, then he's the one who gets yelled at by the Admiralty. If you're wrong, that's probably your command. It's at least a court-martial. But you do have a legal leg here. The, the idea is that you have been presented with a situation that may imperil the ship. So you can interject here or you can support the Admiral. But this is the dilemma that you're faced with. That Trailblazer has pointedly not highlighted. <laughs> uh, I've got other characters I can make. <laughs> <laughs> Could I spend it... that momentum to open a shipwide comms? Whilst I'm directly um... looking at Trailblazer, like face to face. That sounds like an advantage, so it'll cost two. Sure. All personnel, we're about to take heavy contacts. All non-security personnel are to assist with repairs and for medical purposes. This is not a drill. Again, this is not a drill. I know, cut comes. Arlen. Guess what, buddy? Sir. Confirmation of that order? <laughs> yeah, you're having a role here, Fred, because uh, this directly tickles your trauma. Um, <laughs> phrasing, I know. <laughs> I just didn't want to say triggered. I couldn't think of a better word quick enough. Tickles your trauma. I'm going to have to use that one. <laughs> Although, given the circumstances, I think triggered is the appropriate word, but I can understand why we want to avoid using it flippantly. Yeah. Um... 
Fitness medicine difficulty five. You're being asked to imperil your husband in a life or death situation. This is not something you can easily do, uh, given your current trauma with Yolan. Uh, Boy, you better make this fucking roll. <laughs> um. Yeah, and that that thing I was saying in, in earlier about hey, fitness medicine and roles are are usually dump stats for some reason. <laughs> Guess what's my dump stat? <laughs> uh, Anyone can convince uh, you to make this fitness command to keep my cool. I take you know what fitness command I'll take sure. Given the situation, given especially Penn's little speech there, a uh, Penn can assist with presence command. Not that he knows he's assisting, but he's un inadvertently assisted you with this. Okay, day. Um, technical insight to weigh the to, to weigh a exactly a how screwed the ship is and how much. Much imperiled, imperiled we actually are if we hit that barrier. I'll I'll take that under under that auspice that you know that you've done. This is as safe as it gets, short of not going through. Oh, I just came back. Are we all doing a fitness medicine difficulty five? Nope, Arlen. Oh, just Arlen. Oh, okay. Nope, just Arlen. I just, just I said me. something. I mean, about, yeah, I said, I said something. Did... At a point in there. Ah. Yeah, Arlen realized that his husband is part of that mozzarella ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He may have trouble obeying that particular order. You can find a new husband. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> I mean, we can also find the new wow. chief engineer. We can find a new mozzarella ball if we have to, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, 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 I, yeah, I don't think I've done any sort of... Uh, of determinations for something like this. No. Well, you only got this trauma, what, a couple sessions ago? A couple weeks ago, yeah. yeah. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, how those how are those directives looking? Let's let's take a peek there. I mean, directive two applies. I, I would point that out. That is the order the admiral gave you. <laughs> Well, if his order is going to put my husband at, at risk, I'm going to challenge that directive. That doesn't let you spend to it. Being a challenge no, but it gives a point. Me, yeah, he it can, gives yeah. me a point. In which case, I'm totally going to spend that at point on home is where Actually, the tools are. For, for recording purposes, if you're challenging, Directive 3 makes better sense. Uphold sharply traditions and best practices. What he's doing is not a best practice. This is incredibly reckless. Okay. Doing. So Which, oh, you should agree with him. Go up. Well, I'm willing to be reckless, but uh, <laughs> I'll there, force myself to do this anyway. <laughs> spending into what though is the problem? Uh, spending into home is where the tools are. My tools are here. So is my husband. Uh, you won't let and, your home. You'll. Oh, go ahead. Did he call him a tool? <laughs> no, he's saying the heart part. I think. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Yes. I don't know. I guess? We, we hope. I mean, we've already established that I Alan hope. doesn't know how to husband. Shh. <laughs> it's fine. That's true. He doesn't know how to do anything. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <That's so nice. laughs> He's indecisive. You say this just, you say this just <laughs> after I redline your engines. <laughs> Oh. Can't argue with that. <laughs> I mean, you can, <laughs> but no one wants to. Will, you shouldn't argue will, with will that. You accept that. Will you accept that uh, determination spend? I will. Yeah. Do you want to spend as much momentum as you want? Yeah. Let's just dump the momentum in. Oh, I probably should spend two to make that anti personnel while I'm at it. The, the barrier. Yeah, I'm just advancing the barrier because I said it does that. I'm like, wait, I didn't spend to make it do that, so I should totally spend to make it do that. 
Good. Well, you got it. it. No, you got it. it. <laughs> yeah. I'm again. Captain, back. Slow help. So, so. Oh, uh, there it is. Yeah. So, Arlen, you are you are, despite your trauma, you are free to decide whether or not you're okay. You are supporting your captain and the admiral in this, uh, rather than being forced in a fit of panic to disobey the order. Because that was scary. Because yeah, this is this is not. This is not a, a super safe thing for your husband, to put it mildly. Captain, by, by what manner are we going to uh, get through that uh, barrier? We're going to travel for it. Not the most ideal way. But I am taking a chance and listening to the advice of the Admiral. I'm all for or taking taking a risk, yes sir, but uh, right now I'm not sure or how the uh, numbers are going going to uh, come up any other way besides uh, us turning into uh, shredded cheese. Captain, either wrangle him or relieve him. We need someone awake at that station. Lieutenant Arlen, I understand that you disagree with the decision. If you wish to take it up with the hires up after the mission, by all means. For now, maintain focus or you're relieved of duty. Trailblazer's even looking in your direction. But Penn, you can see Trailblazer is not exactly... He's not even mad. He's more... Yeah, I'm not happy about what I'm making him do. <laughs> yeah. He's trying not to show that to him. To Penn's not exactly the, happy the either. Yeah. Uh, quick question, GM. Yeah. From a mechanics standpoint, uh, does anti-personnel trigger on the same condition as normal injuries from breaches? Uh, it triggers on effects. So anti-personnel per effect on the damage rolled before breaches occur? Uh, anti-personnel... Hold on. Yeah. Uh, bring... This could be incredibly relevant. It. Yeah. Um, hello, brain. There we go. Well, that's why I didn't have it pinned. That's my fault. <laughs> do, 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 do. Totally, I I, to, I pull so much from the expanded weapons thing from continuing missions because holy crap, I love their ideas. Um. Oh, I got it backwards. Uh. So, so for each effect rolled, uh, that is one damage to the crew. roll is one damage to the crew. Yeah. Does that if it's all if it's all resist if it if it's all resisted, then nothing nothing's gonna happen. Like if the ship just tanks this hit and okay. nothing happens, then the anti personnel doesn't come through. If any of it comes through, anti personnel bleeds through all its damage because may the ship may not be damaged, but the people inside can get hurt. Okay. But it is a, it, it is. It is not. Uh, it is not vicious. And anti personnel are two different effects. So it's one per. If I wanted to do extra anti personnel, I have to spend more threat to make it. It's anti personnel one. Uh, if I wanted to do more damage, I have to make it anti personnel two, three, four, five, and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Vicious has an effect upon the ship, not on the anti personnel apart. Hope that answers. I think that answers it. Yeah. Yeah, basically, we need him to roll piss poor, because he's also got piercing too. Which is per effect, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Alright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm weighing the moral implications missions of this. Well, I'm going to be able to let you think about that for a second. I do re refill my drink anyway, so percolate on that thought, thought, folks. Feel free to discuss. 
Mm. On a meta level, that's in front of the Admiral, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Meta, meta level. Oh, you think Trailblazer er, er, has gone on Blood Rage Blind and is foolhardily trying to ooh, bum rush us in? Uh, or does he have a secret uh, door trigger? He's he's not... Well, at the start of this, he was nearly at that stage of, like, pure fury. Uh, until Pen talked him back. So he's not, like, suicidal. He's just at the stage of, you're worried about your husband, he's worried about his home planet. This is survivable. Yeah. I... Like, Pen isn't happy. Like, none of us, none of the commander staff are happy at the moment. I don't think I... Uh, yeah, if we hit that barrier, I don't think this is you know, survivable or we're going to be severely limping and we're not going to be ready to go into combat. I think you sincerely are underestimating Achilles as a vessel. Uh, what's our resistance currently at? 16. 18. Oh, 16. Never mind, you're right. 16. We also have a certain talent which we added to it. Mm hmm and a certain commander that can just say no. Yeah. Yeah, so even if we breach the shields, we can just say no. Nah. Okay. The commander can just say no. So technically we can get through this. But like out of like mechanical wise, yeah. Trailblazer's not happy this is happening. Penn's sure as shit isn't happy. He isn't happy giving this order because he understands his partner's on the ship and his sister is literally on the bridge when he's just given that order. And I mean... Ven Ven's freaking out because he's going to be like one of the first three or he's going to be one of the first people on the bridge hit when this thing happens. And it's, it's, it's By stressful. like a millisecond. Go away. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, this isn't the ideal situation Penn wants to give this order or send the ship in. But he understands what Trailblaze is asking and understands the risk that's involved. That's why he's giving the command decision of, we are doing this. Accept it, or you are dismissed. Yeah, I'm back. You might not like it, but unfortunately, <laughs> that's what it has to come down to. But I'm broadly agreed. Like, I just I think the the milliseconds or seconds of warp versus impulse are incredibly valuable. Yep. Especially if we're firing off cloaked torpedoes, uh, every single millisecond counts. And also, I I wasn't fully aware of the. As shield modulations, I kind of heard something about it, but I didn't hear the exact number. So, um, all right, I'm gonna uh, fur my eyebrows, turn back to my console, and GM, I want to create an advantage somehow. Oh, uh, what advantage? Uh, reinforce our structure structural integrity in the field so that way if we do get breached we're not going to lose atmosphere in a lot of sections oh uh, I know what to do um, uh, b -b 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 control plus engineering difficulty of three assisted by structure plus engineering you're basically what, what I'm letting this do <clears throat> is um, if I roll on the damage uh, uh, my roll to see which system gets breached, uh, or if sorry, not been. If I do, uh, if I roll structure, you will force me to re-roll once. So I, I the first hit if it hits structure, it bounces off to something else. I have to roll again. If I roll structure again, well, that's just bad luck. Then yeah, that's just bad luck. But no, this advantage forces the re-roll. Um, technical insight focus. Yep. Take one single threat and not 
uh, Pennymore. <laughs> that is wise. <laughs> <coughs> oh, ship coming in clutch. The ship's uh, got a fantastic structure. Reroll. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, wow, that is... Cough, cough, another reason Trailblazer wanted this ship. He knows this thing's sturdy as hell. <laughs> kind of designed in that way. Like, ah, yeah, I'm gonna head back home. Now, every time I go back home, things go bad, so let's just... Let's not go over there in the Victoria. Let's not do that. It seems like a bad idea. This thing is, is built like a brick house. Yep. Uh, I think the, Plus, the, there's oh, that. There's the crystal carbon hull plating. Yep. That's true. But uh, yeah, right. uh, I think the the last thing that would be as, as soon as we're about to hit it would be station wide communications of all personnel brace for impact on repeat. There's actually a rule for that. Yep, I'm actually going to use that rule. Um, because normally the thing you say when your ship's really tiny and every breach can kill everyone. Um, but given that this is kind of that too. Uh... Well, especially after, after the last communique that I just put out, it seems sensible to also warn people that it might not help, but brace for impact. Every little fucking thing. All right, so what you do, you call out uh, Brace for Impact. You spend all mm -hmm. momentum in the group pool. Um, and you roll a number of challenge dice equal to the amount of momentum spent. That's how much resistance you gain. Okay. Huh. I say we do it. Every little bit will help. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking like, I'll maybe spend one of my medals, but that's only on a successful task. This isn't me sort of seizing at a task, it's just a mechanic. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I'll spend five to increase our resistance by f five, basically. Five challenged us. Oh, yeah, sorry. So you could get more, or you could get less. One, two, three, four. Is it worth spending a threat to try and reroll those other two? No. Fair. I think. Based off, based off of um, where threat is right now. Yeah, so I think that pit puts us up from 16 to 20 resistance. Yeah. Because I've got it in the actual resistance tab on the ship. Mm -hmm. That's just a stupid number. It is. <laughs> and it could all get eaten through. Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> Alright. Excuse me, baby, hold I think together. that's our, our preparations. If, all right. if, if that doesn't get this... eaten through, nothing's going to hit us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna suck. Yup. <laughs> Armored mozzarella oh, out of a cannon. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> How's this one go? Always look on the bright side of life. Um, yes. Any other last words before Trailblazer leads you through the particle field? I don't like how you're phrasing that, GM. <laughs> Just managing expectations, that's all. Yeah. No, not from me. Yeah, I've I've warned the crew and warned them to and informed them to brace for impact. It's up to the crew now how they take the, the last moment. Hey, did you know Yolan's contract is up? No, I'm just kidding. Uh He's asking for a raise and uh, you know how that goes with Paramount. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah. Um... Womp womp. <laughs> oh, 
that's that there is the quote from tonight. Armored mozzarella fired from the cannon. Let's go. <laughs> Well, go on, you saucy bastard. Roll that dice. And the lights blink out. You are bathed in darkness for a second. And you hear loud screeching noises uh, and alarms going off at every console. Good luck, folks. So, please roll low, re-roll, and roll fucking low. Yeah. Reroll fails. Fuck you. <laughs> All zeros. Uh, All the resistance gone. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> sure Ah, four, six, two. Yeah, that's resistance gone. So, we'll deal with the ship first. Uh, let's tally this up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 26, 27, 29, 31. 6 to 31 confirmed. <laughs> um, so that eats through all your resistance. Uh, your resist, uh, uh, so it's just straight up two yeah. breaches. Two Our breaches. Shields go down. Um, quick question. Uh, well, we roll Hold crystal on. carbon hull plating for each of those breaches. Uh, you know, only for one of it, because one of it's for taking at least five, the other one's for your shields being dropped. Uh, I'm preventing the... Decoration of Gallery. Oh, uh... Declaration of Gallantry. If you haven't used it already, yep, you can half that damage. I'm having that damage. Uh, so... guess what? I've got that as well. Oh. I'll half it as well. I have that as well. Does that work? Yes! <laughs> it's a hazard. Uh, that's that's what I was asking. So the union GM applies. Does a character? Uh, the character, yeah. So th this will only this that will only apply. You're right. Uh, it's only for characters. Yep. This will apply for the yep. anti personnel half of the attack that hits you in particular. As we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mm -hmm. damage to all personnel on the ship. Minus, uh, minus six because of all for the hoplites. So the hoplites take um, four. 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 So all the hoplite people will not get injured. They'll just get stressed out because they're they, all of a sudden they see their shields radiating energy because they're being shredded from something coming from, hitting them from hyperspace that they can't see. Um. So, yes, so, uh, you were saying something thralic. So, um, I can't do this for PCs, but for our non-activated NPC crew, can I use precaution? For precaution, here's what I'm going to do, because this is a rather pivotal moment for the ship. Um, okay. There's the crew in general, all the nameless support characters that don't have names yet. They're just your regular people. Um, yep. You uh, you can save them. For each of your support characters, they're all getting injured. So you can save one of them from the damage. With I, I mean, maybe just save the general crew and let, let people take injuries. We have a medical staff. Keep Shreer up. We need our pilot. Uh, 
uh, sorry, you said. Yeah. I can choose one NPC you, or the crew, it, or I can choose the crew and one NPC. So either or. Either or. No, either the crew in the general or one of your known support characters. Who has the better contract deal? You tell me. It has to be the crew in general, I think. So, because normally when you take what take values. normally when you take breaches, I would roll uh, to see how yeah. much percentage of the crew got hurt. Uh, if you do that, then the crew in the general was saved by the in some, by your preparations. Yes, uh, and precautions. Uh, so you know those hoplites that I have ready all over the ship yeah. with their shields on. Yeah, they're basically like pulling people close to them all over the ship to minimize that damage. Kind of like a huddle down uh, covering type deal. Become people boring. yelling, I don't see anything. That's, you're right. You shouldn't be. Yes. Stay down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so shields are just gone. Shields are gone. Uh, roll a charge knife for the shield breach to see if I do if that happens. Yeah, I did. Ah, oh, that's what that was. All yeah. right, so that's isn't our one breach for doing at least five. Another breach because your shields are dropped. High yield makes it a three breach. Suffer a Wait, breach only so... if you get an effect on the roll. We didn't get an effect. Oh, it's the other yeah. way around. You're oh right. shit! Yeah, <laughs> that is no breach. Yeah, so you'll get hey. two. one breach. Um, two breaches. High yield. All right. Um, let me check. If... And the other, uh, let me double check. I don't know what it was called. I'm just checking my order of heroism right now. For some... If anyone has the Carrigate order of heroism, they can also do it. But... Yeah. Um, their ship. I don't have that one, unfortunately. You're spending that time. I do have it. We no. do not have momentum right now. No, but you can suffer a personal complication. Yep. Uh -huh. Let's go for that. What's I'll happening? take a complication. I'm taking a uh, complication via the order of heroism to prevent one of the breaches to the ship. Yep. Uh, when the ship would suffer one of the breaches, they may uh, either spend two momentum or suffer a complication to ignore one of those breaches. Oh. That's what Barter used all the time and got spaced for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Uh, the complication is that uh... Thralic had to turn off her personal shield to uh, work the XO station to help protect people and ma manage the breach as it was happening. Right. Which means you will take eight stress, which is a non lethal injury. Eight, you said? Yeah. Because uh, two of it's eaten by your heavy to... armor. Yeah. I'm going to use my decoration of gallantry to have that damage taken for four. I'll spend one more and make it five. Actually, I can't do that, because it halves. I'd have to spend two. <laughs> yeah. You don't have. I thought about this, GM. <laughs> oh, Rylo's just taking a flat ten, isn't he? Hey, no. Even if I have it, he takes five. <laughs> All right, let's resolve the ship. So ship breaches are two, I believe. Uh, one? One. One, one, for, one plus the high yield. One. I I just Oh, you just did that's it. That's what I just did. I yield in that, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's called I was trying to cheat, all right? No, um <laughs> Actually, hold on. If I prevent the initial breach that causes high yield to produce another breach, does that produce, does that prevent the second breach? Yes, cuz high yield wouldn't happen cuz the initial breach never occurred. Yeah. How no so I prevented two breaches. How did we get through that without a breach? Because I'm this a god. PC crew versus NPC crew. Massive difference. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, now we have 10 damage going all around to the various support characters and main characters. Uh, Pend, you're fine. Thralic, you managed to survive. Ryloth, you're looking at a non-lethal injury. 
Are you going yeah, down yeah. or are you staying up? If I hop, it does nothing. So, uh, hmm. I like spiting you. Stay up. Two threat. Lieutenant oh, this Arlen. Is, this is why you spent down. Um, I'm gonna have to have it because I only have nine stress. <laughs> so I'm having it, and then I'm spending in to despite you to stay up. Okay. Then, um, I have eleven stress, so I can just spend two to stay up. <laughs> Eleven. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, Shisha Shreer, I believe, was... No, you didn't protect any particular support characters. Time to go around. No, I chose to protect the crew in general. So. This, the only thing I'm checking out right now is if anyone just got insta-gibbed. <laughs> uh, Shisha Shreer did fast a full ten. Uh, she had nine. Oh, so she's, she literally gets flung out of her chair and hits the ground bleeding. Uh-huh. She is dying. Uh, anyone else? Uh, uh, I wouldn't even bother checking the security people there all. Uh, Katal's okay. He has 11, so he's just injured. Oh boy, I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, let me take a look at Yolan. Oh no. Uh, no! No, Yolan's good. Okay, he has eleven. Yeah, he's yeah, he has 11 he's stress. fine, barely. Uh, uh, Draven uh, has eight. Jai Shu has twelve. Uh, oh, the ambassador. <laughs> Ambassador's also going down. Yeah, she's ten out of ten. Holy hell, it's oh. solid. Uh, Brawl's champ's okay. Of course, Brawl's charm's okay. What do you think he is? Some kind yeah. of bitch. <laughs> Ooh, Rikesa. Oh, man. Who the fuck keeps putting their sheets on the back part? Oh, yeah, the ambassador's definitely down. Doctor. Where's our doctor player? Oh, yo, our doctor. Good, isn't it? I think Yolan just barely survives it at 11. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's 10. <laughs> oh, man. Yep, Zeph's okay. Katal's okay. Draven is not. Oh, no. Oh, Rymek isn't? Oh, no. Not Rymek. We like him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, someone we actually care about. Security I'll skip because they all they all have high security scores. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I took a look at them for a second and I was like, it doesn't matter for any of them. <laughs> oh the ambassador dropped too. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, what about Trailblazer himself? I would kind of laugh if he gets it's injured on this. That's why he gave out all the orders beforehand. Like, on a meta level, oh, I would laugh so hard. Spence 2 threat. <laughs> and... In the new scene, the lights come back on. I should have the new scene, sorry. That would just instant was, everybody. I was um, going to say, that kill, kill all was, the dying characters. I was wondering about that. Um, oh, does yes. it hate all their characters? No. Does um, it help that I gave the order for non all non-security personnel to assist with medical? Uh... That will that's certainly something I'm gonna take into account. Um so the minute the lights come on, 
as Trailblazer begins giving orders, uh, someone needs to take care of the ma- the mass casualties you have. You have reports of at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, critically injured persons, along with various other casualties aboard the ship. But there are specifically a certain amount of people who are on death's door right this second. Would you allow a presence command roll? To do what? To order uh, transport transporters to beam those people straight to medical and have medical deal with them. Uh, with what support staff? <laughs> you'd have to. Cre- you'd have to because there need actual rules need to be done to save these people. These people are on, at the five minute death. Threshold. Well, Katal's the transporter chief. He's fine. So yeah, you have a transporter guy. So you can do that part if you want. Technically, have Kobuk as a fucking doctor, but he's the only one. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a medical personnel, so we could use those two as like support as well. Like, like. Yeah. Of the order. All right. So, uh, you're directing Satal essentially is what's happening. Um, yeah. So, you, and your you presence want... command plus Satal's. Oh, let's work out Satal's role. Um, if you want, even though you actually don't need to have Kobuk have them in the medical bay to do this, he's got field medicine. Want... He takes no complication increase for not having the proper tools or equipment. But it's or more no like it, it's more like getting everyone from the different parts of the ship it. into one place. Yeah, yeah, that is useful. Uh, if yeah. you want, while they're doing that, I could also check in on Draven, see if I can't stabilize him. Well, I think I'm just going to send all the people to Medbay. I... Right, but it'll take the load off of Kobuk. He might as yeah, well. if, ben, if Ben manages to, for one opportunity, that's one threat to have the because you need the. Um... The neural uh, stabilizer. I forget what it's called. Um, the no, neural no. calipers? No, 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 no. The other one. No, calipers knock you out. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. The um, cortical stimulator. Cortical stimulator. That's Thank the you, one. Yep. Uh, you'd have to spend one threat to have a to pull to have a cor- to dig out a cortical stimulator because that's something that's separate from a normal med kit. Because uh, it's normally something you only find in the med bay. Um, but you could have that and try to save him right there and then before he gets beamed away. Which could save your medical guy, but the downside is you're giving me a threat. Uh, so. What do you guys think? Should I? Yeah. Before, because Corbett okay. can only really do so many rolls before he's out of time. So yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will try and. I wish we had any of our medical personnel. Damn yeah, <laughs> uh, like our actual doctor. Yeah, narratively, <sighs> they're very busy right now. Yep. They would love uh, to help, but it's like uh, I'm saying we're already saving people who are dying. You'll have to deal without us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what's this role going to be? Uh, it is going to be daring plus medicine difficulty of question mark. Hold on. Uh, that's wrong book. Wrong book. <coughs> um. It's not called the medical book, it's called the science book. Yes. I think narratively, it's that our doctor has exactly 10 <laughs> stress. <laughs> There's that, too. Our doctor would love to help you. They're kind of on a bio bed right now. Give us a second. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, computer, hello? Well, to be fair, we might not have tra- taken any breaches, but none of us were under the illusion we were coming out of this smelling like roses. Right, but I was hoping we'd have, like, you know, a little bit of shield left, maybe. I was hoping it wouldn't exactly eat through all of our resistance. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we might have some, you know, maybe we'd have some supporting crew left over to help. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. This we need to increase rough. the fitness on our support crew. Ooh, that was... Fitness medicine, that one roll, all that everyone dumps. Look, it's I did fitness security, too. Aha, that's what I was going for. Buff your yeah. stat number, not medicine. Yeah, I've got a 15 in that, so I don't know what the guys, shit you guys are talking about. <laughs> I've, got a f- I've, got an, I've got an 11 fitness. Yeah, uh, I've got a 10. I, do, do, we have the, do we have the roll now? Uh, I'm yeah, I just, have a, I, I just have a science officer on my Thursday game, and who has 
as an eight in fitness medicine, and he just keeps tripping cool. the situations where it triggers that roll. Daring medicine yeah. is actually not my best. Hey, guess what? Ooh, you have a action. That yeah, no, that's true. And hopefully, I can use like a um. Hmm. Daring medicine difficulty two. Okay. Normally, it'd be diff two, reduced by one because you're using a cortical simulator, which also makes it possible to be reviving someone who's on who's has lethal. Um, uh, okay. But I I spent it to make it go back up because Mr. Rebin uh, hit the ground in an unfortunate way that complicated his existing injury. Okay. Um, so to speak. Or made it more difficult have... to treat, better way to put it. Yeah. What do we have for um, directives? Uh, they are pinned currently. Prime Directive, get to the Alcara system and uphold Starfleet traditions and best practices. Uh, uphold Starfleet traditions and best practices? Yep. Look out for your crew. Look out for the crewman next to you. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, you're not... even making this your preference uh, problem instead of medical pro problem. We'll th if we can't solve it, then you can solve it. But I'll try to solve it for you. Okay. Uh, I am going to not spend any uh, any resources. I'm just going to roll the two because I already have. Uh, you know, I already have two. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You've already hit it. You're just seeing if you gain any complication or momentum. Yeah. Wow. Generated. Holy cow. You saved um, Ribbon. Hang on. Nope. Uh, none for that. Although, would I be able to spend... Uh, oh, I'd, I'd be able to spend two momentum to swift task, right? Uh, you could, yeah. Would I be able to also help Shishishir? Uh, you would need to, you could, you'd have to spend one momentum or threat for an extra minor to get over to her. And then you'd be looking at a diff, a base difficulty of one plus, uh, base difficulty of two before I spent threat. Okay. Uh, here's my plan then. Okay. All right. Okay. Here, here, here's my play. Uh, I am going to Legion of Honor uh, generate two bonus momentum. Okay. Spend one bonus momentum to get an extra minor. Uh, the remaining bonus momentum plus one more to uh, get the swift task. Okay. Uh, you say now it's diff three? It's well, it is diff three now because I was going to make it. I was going to increase it. The base was two. But okay. Diff, diff three. Right. How much do I hate this person? I really don't like her. Diff four. Okay. Uh, does anyone have uh, anyone have a, a determination to give me? <laughs> no. You, you say that I, I... after I spent so many fucking sessions trying to give you a determination. <laughs> I, I spent three. I've yes. two today. I, I'm tapped. Yes, I have a determination to give you, cadet. Thank you. Okay, and yeah, you can, you can, uh, and you can do that even though you're not the commander yeah. because I'm a cadet. You're a cadet. As you heroically dive underneath the banister and slide over to Sister's rear to save her. Okay. Uh, I, I. I did it once, I can... Okay, wait, where does this go? Where does this go? And, yeah, Thralic, you can see he's kind of like, yep. oh no, oh no. Top of the forehead Andorians underneath. Yeah, yeah you can no, and, and that's what... You're an Andorian. That's what Thralic's doing as, as that, yeah. saying, like, exactly where to place it. It's like, oh, trace a line right. from the base of the antenna to the eye. Okay, yeah, good, good. Um, I am going to... No, then... those are the eyes, those are the eyes! <laughs> Okay, going to spend that determination again. Yep. Um, and hang on. One momentum plus. I I'm trying to remember exactly how much it's going to be to buy. Well, another one. We just need a threat. Uh, okay. Yeah. No. 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 I know. So. Yeah. 
for threat, but I'm going to spend my metal that lets me roll the challenge dice. Ah, oh, I follow. Yep. Ah, oh, you get all of it. Or oh, threat. Ha, ha. But I get four dice, and I'm or I only need two successes. I get two there successes. There you go. God damn. Shisha Shreira is saved from death. Now you have the other five to worry about. Control plus engineering. And I'll spend two to have Mr. Satal not be down in the transporter room. He was up here on the bridge when this happened. Wait, why? He's our transporter chief. <sighs> yeah, He's helping Arlen with, some, with yeah. redlining the engines. He was busy. <laughs> oh, O'Brien's on the bridge sometimes. The mistake. Uh, who, wants to, <laughs> who wants to grab Katal? Uh, um, so the base difficulty is two. They're not on a pad. They're not going to a pad. Uh, no difficulty decrease because he's in the transporter room. Uh, and I hate NPCs today. So I'll make that. Uh... <laughs> How do you transport? Um, brain. Control. Control. Well, I knew that part. Oh, that's the other bit. Sensors engineering? Yeah, it's sensors engineering. Yeah. I, I only oh. rem The only reason I remember that so much is because of the fact that both the Kismet and the Hadfield had the advanced sensors, so every transporter roll. Uh, yep, you're looking at a diff five check. And he has give still you has... two threat uh, for transporter chief. Uh, reduce reduce the difficulty by two. Diff three. Yeah, and you've got the yeah. two determinations. Yep. Um. Meticulous isn't really helpful here. Cool. Uh, I said read it. Give uh, two more threat for a third die. Focus in transporters. Yes, to focus. Cool. Um, oh, right. I, I did that in the wrong order. Um, I'm huh. giving two threat for the third die because I'm spending the determination towards... The value I like a challenge. Yeah. Um, then rolling three with gold engineering. Re rolling that twenty. Right now it's five hits. Seven hits. Uh, I can cancel my own comp, so I'll do that. All right. And the ship. Two more hits from the ship. That is nine hits. On a diff All three, right. we generate four. As the chaos of the bridge continues in a small picture-in-picture, picture, uh, we see someone racing around trying to save these people who are beaming into his room. And uh, yeah, he's he's the man on deck. Welcome to the job, cadet. <laughs> Who oh, wants God. to be <laughs> Copac? God, if he pulls this off, he's going to get the biggest ego. Uh, I'm going to double check something, make sure I'm not lying to myself or cheating you guys. Um, so insufferable. Right. So here's the gamble, folks. Kobuk, these people are all... Uh... Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. It went from non-lethal to lethal. Yeah. So non-lethal not... injury to stress fill. Right. So that actually, it, actually, it's not even the five-minute death clock. It's the end of scene death clock. Still. Yeah. Um. All right. So. Which is more manageable. Yeah, but yes. Unfortunately, Kovac isn't too bad. 
Kobok can attempt to save someone um, this scene. Like a save somebody action four times for the scene ends. If you want someone to try to save my lives after that, you need someone else to do it because Kobuk's too busy. He's he's running around trying to grab oh. things and look up things and talk to staff, which Medicine Ford's pretty good. He's fairly competent at that, but there's only so much time he no has. No idea. What if he yeah. gets Rikesa up first? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then she can help too. the person that he can't. Because yeah, it's only yeah. one person that she can yeah. help. Because he yeah, can also we... determination can spend swift Rex... task. Can yeah. Anorexia act after she's been revived? Yes. Cool. Yeah, that's what we. So need. who's who's rolling for Kobuk? Not it. Madison. I, I just I just rolled. <laughs> I was gonna say I I just I just rolled my life saving for uh, the day. Ryloff, would you uh, like to be Kobuk? If not, I'll I'll take him. I mean, you have had a wonderful voice for Kobuk, so you know. Of which I do not remember. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a walrusy thing. That doesn't help me in one bit. Daring plus medicine roll, <laughs> difficulty three to save Rikesa. Are you sure you want me to save Rikesa? That's the voice. That's the voice. <laughs> uh, does it help that I'm in medbay? Yes. Uh, basically, the cortical stimulator, it would be diff four, but we're, he doesn't have to spend to have the simulator because it's in the room. <laughs> he just grabs it from a drawer. Does it help that we have extra crew assisting? If he was the chief medical staff, it would. Uh, however, for two momentum, that difficulty can be decreased as some of the extra crew comes to his aid. I see him busy, and they're like, huh? Oh, we'll help you. Hmm. It's good. Which will that allow him to save one extra person. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll spend two to try and bring up two people. Okay, so he can... he Not only is it diff two to save her, but he can also try to save a total of five people by himself. Because he has extra hands that he didn't have. Five that's the number ago. of current casualties we have. And then maybe spend three momentum. Uh, first off, uh, focus emergency medicine. Yes. I was just thinking, is it possible to use healing hands, but. It's only a control okay. medicine. Yeah, well, and it's specifically for injury-related complications. This yeah. isn't to heal an injury. Uh, does field medic kick in? Are we in the midst of combat? I don't think so. Nah, the man. So I'm going to give you a... I'm going to spend a moment Yeah, I feel medic wouldn't help in this. I mean, it it could affect, but it wouldn't help his role at all because it's not a complication increase or anything. <clears throat> King nice. Or you get the momentum back. <clears throat> if, oh, right, because it was diff two. Uh -huh. right. So, uh, Ragsa is revived. Okay, I would like Over. to determine determination spend. For who? For Kobuk. To go again. Oh, he, he can keep going. He's, he just has X amount of attempts. Oh, okay. Yeah, he has four, you said? He has four oh, left. Oh. He, had, he had four originally. It went up to five because there's a bunch of people rushing around him. So he has five turns. So he has four turns to save four people at this point. That's that's what we're Well, and at. now Reichsa is up. So, well, he, so we should he have Reichsa had... assist Kobuk now, I think. Or, or maybe Reichsa take the lead and Kobuk, like he says, depending on who goes where. And who has what stats. Yeah. Uh, 
And who's on first? Yeah, I think due to just waking up, probably shouldn't have her do it. Good point. I think narrative. Yeah, narrative. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, let's check our initiative scores. Uh, who goes first? Uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna go from right to left. So I'll do Katrera. What goes second? I don't know. Goes third. So spend a moment. Uh, difficulty for this is diff. Uh, would be diff two brought down to diff one because of all the people. Uh, I'll take Rexy, I guess. Um. Reroll. Saved. Uh, focus in medical technology or surgery for the assist here. Yeah. Yes. On that. Uh, I think we can just let that one go. Yeah. One down, three to go. Yep, I'll move on to Vassan. I'll spend one. Uh, at least we got one. One for me, assist. So that's two float. Um, any way we can get them back to actively helping? Not necessarily in the med bay, but back to stations? Uh, for two moment to be, you could have the advantage that Vizan basically is able to pop up to her feet and is immediately ushered back right off the duty. Yeah. The we... ship is at red alert. All hands should be on deck cause if they can. Yeah, that's fine. We we had two floor. I just wasn't pulling another one out to pull out. Looks like the run is available for use immediately, if you want. Uh, then it's uh, I think it's Ryman. Yep. Uh, spending one. Do I fish? No, I think we, uh, so. That's what we gain four. So two to get Rymet up and running again. Okay. And just let the one go. And last one. Yep. So again, let's spend one. Here you have it. Fucking oh, kid's crushing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he is gonna he's get... gonna get. Oh, specialist credit too. Can we also get, without the amount of successes we've got here, just Katrera gets up and is ready to go as well? No, you're not that lucky. <laughs> but uh, no, I think so. That's uh, we gain five off that. So oh two. my goodness. So that's two. I've got two more flow. Um, it has to be related to the treatment of that patient. Maybe that they're uh, helping calm people? But as being a diplomat, they're like calming the situation down in Med Bay? Mm, I'll have to say no. Because that, that's not Kobuk doing it, that's the patient doing it. That his ex advantage of his extremely conf uh, confident, considering he's just done that. Like, the, the advantage that Kobuk has gotten into the zone? Yeah. Yeah. You could have him have the advantage that his next medical, his future medical role should be easier. He's basically taken a sort of, uh, asserted his medical chops in the bay for now. <laughs> Well, I believe that went well. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, she had such a big head after this. Yes. As the new scene begins, Shisha Shreer and Drebin slowly wake up and start picking themselves off the floor because they had non lethal injuries. We have Shara wakes up. Power. In medical yeah, she bay. Has power. Yep. 
Yeah, we have shields. We have power. We get our stress back. Oh, wow. Cadet Ben, back to your station, please. Ah, oh, yes. Right. Right. Drummond blinks as he's on the floor like, the hell happened? Yeah, and I'll help to uh, uh, Salabak. Uh, yeah, Ven helps Draven back up to his seat, and uh, Draven can now see that Ven's hands are covered in, uh, in blood, both red and blue, in nondescript liquids. Uh, Arlen, I will point out to you that your ship is surprisingly unscathed. It lost all its shields, and, but there are huge gashes. All across the paint job of the hull. Hmm. Shields but, are uh, gone. Go ahead, oh, so we have tiger stripes now. Yes. Yep. Nice. Shields are down. Uh, you, you, have glittering, you have glittering crystal uh, stripes all across the ship because the awesome. crystal layer's been exposed. Um, yeah. Shields <laughs> are back. Job. Okay. Surprising we made that. Um, next question How's my husband? Uh, he. He's spooked. I, I, Not appropriate. I will take to... time away to. I'll take time away a, to check in on him. I mean, if that we're through senses, I will need a target solution, or a vis vision on a target. Given we're going for extreme range here. Yeah. We have more pressing matters because if we don't engage the enemy, then we die anyway. Yeah, it's not really appropriate that one, but. And ben, write me up for it. <laughs> Lieutenant yes. Arlen, stay in your spot or you will be detained. I will not warn you again. Trailblazer just kind of stare, look, looks over at Pend and nods at him like he's asserting that as an order. And he doesn't turn to see if Arlen leaves or not. He just he just trusts the crew to do what he told them to do. <laughs> to be fair, I wasn't leaving, but I was trying to ew, call someone. But yeah, if that well, is, yeah, if you still, yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah, like no one blames you, but we're in the middle of a combat situation. It's like no time, but <laughs> yeah. uh, that is a form of dereliction of duty. Yeah, I will say, Arlen, that if your uh, your character knows, being a serving Starfleet officer, that if your husband was killed, uh, you probably would have gotten a medical alert as his uh, next of kin. Like, that just would have been automatic. Yeah, so, that would, the fact that... they haven't said anything to you yet either means they're still working on him or he's fine. But for now, would... a damage control report's required to figure out if he's hurt or not. Which we don't have time for. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, Cadet Ben gets a reading, because there's no role involved, because you did this role already. You did it in advance. <laughs> I get a reading. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> I did all that for nothing. I honestly don't know how he came out of that unscathed. Yeah? Hey, there's a reason Bro, he wanted you to unscathed. prep all that stuff. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the, the crew got the crew got slammed. Yeah, no, but the no. crew didn't get no, slammed. No, they did. I prevented that. <laughs> yeah. No one died. The crew didn't slam. No one died. We have no breaches. The ship's fine. We would have like we would have like lost so much from our departments if I hadn't done that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because we would have been operating on literally only named characters, because everyone else would have taken ten d damage, as well as your civilian uh, compliment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> precautions is amazing. Uh, okay, here we go. And here comes the report. Oh, right, one of these changed. Uh oh. Oh goodness, are we going up against skill 20 ships again? <laughs> Please no. I don't know. He, I asked him and he wouldn't tell me. Not again. Well, there might be cloaked ships. 
Oh, cloak right. scale cloak three torpedoes ships. and cloak ships. Think about cloak ships so that they don't have shields. Yeah, that's honestly, you could just ask fire, fire full spread everywhere. Uh, Lynn, that's that's cloak ships at our tech level. <laughs> I don't know if these are cloak ships at our tech level. <laughs> Like, I don't know what anything. <laughs> ah. Dude, I am so expecting rep things on, on Pend. I'm not sure you've actually done anything like, wrong yet. I, 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 I like at least three. I clearly had the option of. Disregarding Trailblazer's order and take us in it slowly. I put the crew in danger. Yeah, that's fair. Like, I'm definitely getting dinged. Even though I believe it was the right choice. So right. Uh, Captain, uh, I'm getting uh, astrometric and uh, planetary geology data from sensors. Um... I'm, you know, he, he squints. He says, oh, well, thank you. Yes, I'm picking the, I'm picking the part, up the particle barrier. Uh, no ships on sensors. Why does that it, not make me feel any more comfortable? And, wait. That, huh? That can't be right. Like, you know, he, 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 now because now he's actually looking a bit closer at the actual geological data. Um, sir, uh, you know, he, he turns around and actually isn't facing Pend, but Admiral Trailblazer. Is is Al Alcara 2 supposed to be a, a, a nuclear hellscape? <laughs> hmm? I'm detecting a toxic atmosphere. Uh, the planet appears to be undergoing a nuclear winter of sorts. Uh, temperatures ranging from negative 50 to zero degrees Celsius. Toxic atmosphere. Captain Pend, please verify those readings. <clears throat> I'll head over to the sensor. And you know, he calls. <laughs> As the captain looks over the re and he just motions to them, and uh, I will, I will copy you the uh, the readings. Pend is oh, now to copy just over. send them. Oh yeah, he just sent them. Yeah. Mm. I was a half click before you. Sorry, I would let you do it. Otherwise, <laughs> all good. All good. Yeah, I mean there are other planets in the system, but uh, that one. That one, uh, oh. Um, well, it seems like Alcara Prime is the going under nuclear winter, but Alcara 2 is just the thin atmosphere. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Well, Alcara Two is is what's designated as the main world. Yeah, but it's Alcara Prime that's the toxic waste. Alcara Prime is just cold temperature, thin what? atmosphere. No. Huh? I'm I'm confused. Uh, am I reading that correct, GM? Uh, no. Uh, Alcar Prime is a Class H planet. It's the first one. Yeah, and then Alcara uh, 2, main world. Terrain, nuclear winter, temp cold, atmosphere toxic. I think that's copied across in a screwy way, then. 
Oh, I just copied across weird. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm looking at it. It's just like... Sorry, yeah. I'm... So, Atura it... or 1... And is class A. Altair 2 is nuclear wasteland. And Altair 2 is the prime planet. Is uh, pr presumably, presumably, I know that because of like inf astrometric data that I was given by the Admiral Probes. or something. Yeah, or Pro. Yeah, you basically okay. blanketed the system in Pro. Do you have more detail than most people have in a sensor sweep? Yeah, I was like, if you see how, you, how that got posted to me, Corbett, it looks kind of screwy. <laughs> Oh. Uh, let me see if me copy. No, no, he, he's, he's put it in. Oh, that's good. He's put it in general. Oh, oh, oh he, he put it in general. I. But yeah. uh, yes, it seems to be. Con I can, can confirm his readings. Admiral. <sighs> right. Do I get any emotions off of him? Um. <laughs> You're getting a sense of depression and despair, but he's trying very, very hard to keep himself here and not shut off. Like he's, head, it's... Head back up. Uh, senses. Captain. Go ahead, Captain. Report. Senses. Get a scan of anything else in in the system, not just the planets themselves. Uh, understood. Uh, in fact, for starters, um, then uh, for his free question, mm -hmm. uh, may I ask, uh, am I picking up any life signs on... Uh, Anywhere. On Alcara 2? Well, for, for starters, I want to start with the planet that is the nuclear hellscape. And uh, I'm also going to roll my untapped, see if I can't generate any any bonus for further questions. Wow, I'm just uh, not getting anything. <laughs> At least I'm not giving the GM any threat. I was going to ask. I was like, oh, did I get any? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just rolling zeros. Nothing for you, but nothing for me. Supposed to be uh, zero to hero, not the other way around. Um, Just like that. Let me get you a number. Hold on. Alright. Alright, cool. Great. Wonderful. Uh -oh. That's awesome. That's great. That's, is that's it great. like Oh no, what is this? What is this going to be? I think that was a roll to figure out how well anything works down there, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That's either really good or really bad. Or just how many people are on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah complicated you, amount of people. You laugh. There are alive, that's a there are zombies. Yeah, no, you laugh. That's a legitimate response. No, I know, I know it is. I'm just like, I, I don't know which it is. It could, it could be any of those three. It could be good. It could be bad. Or it could just be the number of people that are left. There's no way to know. I lean bad here. Yeah, definitely leaning bad to, uh, that's the total population count. Okay, what's the other number I need? What's this number? God. Also, planes of silicon glass. That, that's lovely, too. Yeah, it's cool, but also not super helpful <laughs> at this exact moment. <laughs> Oh, they glassed Alcara 3 at one point. Fun. Yeah. yeah. And then... Sorry, I have the math here. Because I, I rolled a lot higher than I thought I was going to. <clears throat> <laughs> Okay. 
Yeah, you rolled almost like pretty much max. Ugh. <laughs> There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 all right. They're zombies, aren't they? Uh, I, I don't know. Just, um, h hang on. Uh, sir, oh. um, I'm detecting a lot of life signs down there. Um. Trailblazer uh, looks hopeful in his eyes. Grand total... Uh, grand total, uh, alive down there, uh, 2.4 billion. Unfortunately, I am also detecting, uh, I am detecting 4.8 billion dead. As well as 800 million casualties. Or 800 million with uh, inconsistent life signs. Sorry, it, it took... Uh, it actually took a moment for the sensors to, to process uh, the number of life signs I was getting. Uh, the sensors weren't quite expecting to see that many stable readings, so I had to readjust the parameters. Con, take us into orbit of the planet. Admiral, can you reach out? Stand down, red alert, Captain. <clears throat> Stand down, red alert. Do you want me to continue scanning for cloaked vessels? Captain, you have the bridge. Find out what happened to my home world. I will be in my quarters. I need to make some calls. <clears throat> he steps out of the chair and just walks off the bridge. Scan for any cloaked vessels. Once we're getting to orbit of the planet, let's try and reach out and offer assistance. Captain, do you want me to stand down on the red line? Yes, for now, if it's more looking like this is a... less of a security operation, more of a save as many as we can operation now. Hi, sir. Uh, standing down red line. Up flight team, stand by condition one, go to condition two. Uh, I would like to make that requested scan for cloaked vessels. Uh, for a uh, for a momentum, you can you can get that because you uh, you basically have the whole system blanketed in probes. <laughs> sure. Uh, currently not detecting any cloaked vessels in system. Uh, Captain. Uh, uh, if I may. Go ahead. Um, by the looks of things, uh, there are going to be a lot of people needed for treatment of, uh, radiation burns. I have, uh, experience in chemical synthesis. Uh, I might be able to help in the, uh, the medical teams are probably going to need a lot of uh, uh, radiation treatment chemicals. Uh, Cadet. Yes. Everyone with medical training will be assisting. Yes, sir. And he sits back down. Once we're in orbit, let's reach out to the planet. We need to get their permission first to head down or beam up. Once we have that, then we'll begin... Rendering assistance. Understood? Yes, sir. Let's get to it.
The red alert lights automatically turn on. Ryloff, give me insight plus security, difficulty three. Assisted um, by sensors plus security. You're seeing something happening to your ship. <laughs> paranoia. Yeah. And I'm paranoid, so if that changes anything. Uh, difficulty two. Normally paranoia wouldn't help you here, but it, <laughs> it's helping this is... get something no one else would be looking for. <laughs> okay, toss you a threat, because that's how this works. Ha! Reroll anyway. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay. There we go. Noise. Noise. <laughs> From? Uh, it's a momentum spent. I could take a reasonable guess, but I want a confirmation. <laughs> True. Yeah, spun, spent the flow. Yep. Spell for the love of God. There we go. I mean, we knew that already. F O R space T H E space. Right. -E -E space. Okay. Helm evasive from these coordinates, and uh, you can use tractor beams in reverse, correct? This basically beams. makes it a repulsor beam instead. I don't uh, know what happens if you hit a tractor beam with a repulsor beam, but that's what I want to do to try and would, give us a little bit of an extra chance here. Uh, if it locks on while you fire... Uh, uh, <laughs> the target would have... The target uh, planet would have to have more strength than your tractor... than your repulsor beam. Uh, oh, I know what you do. Um... No, I know I know how to mechanically do this. Never mind. Um, you would roll control security as an assist to the die because you're basically firing the tractor beam yeah. to help shove your sh like your ship can't repulse the planet. You're too tiny, but yeah. that little bit of shove is just enough to make the cons job easier. And it's more interfering with their beam rather than trying to push the planet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also, if we push off the planet, we go the other way. Newton's third law and everything. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Uh, this is a. I suppose it's opposed. Because <laughs> I was. Uh, opposed. Uh, Shishir, uh needs to make a daring plus con opposed roll, assisted by Ryloff. As Ryloff has directed the ship to move away from the planet. Oh. And we've got a red alert, and then it's helm evasive. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and I took took the uh, red line off too soon. No. Oh. Um, oh engine sure con for the assist, of course. Okay. Uh, spend her determination. I'll buy a die. Why not? I can ev evade any threat for value. Obviously, helm control. Spent five. No, I nearly rolled it on my sheet and not used hers. God damn it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, I'll reroll. And two from the ship as well, so that's four, six, seven. That control security. Eight, nine. Mm. 
But part of that reaction was governed by, uh, he has the talent of no hesitation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so, so you've moved from close, you were in close range to the planet, which is in orbit, and then Ryloff ordered you into medium range, basically breaking away from orbit and getting as far away from the planet, uh, getting away from the planet. Tractor beam from the planet's surface. Uh, large structure on one of the major continents, somewhere in the center of it. Indeterminate uh, relations to us. Given recent events, it's likely that they would view us as hostile. Or possible. Tractor beams are not a standard greeting. Read the type. Can anyone think of any advantages or questions for this role? It was also equivalent to strength 20. <laughs> Oh, because of the entire gosh darn planet. Well, it's not the entire planet, it's the structure size. That'd be relevant yeah, to the yeah. structure rather than the planet. If it'd be the planet, the strength would be way higher. Yeah. yeah. That's no move. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe strength Fuck. 100. Go advantage. away, GM. <laughs> uh, advantage of every a move and extra. A uh, uh, range band away, we slingshot around the planet. Why would we need or, to move an extra range band away? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's tractor, beams, from... tractor beams are close range. Torpedoes aren't. I don't think is we want to torpedo a... the planet that's been bombarded. <laughs> no, I'm saying they're going to launch torpedoes at us. If they view us as hostile. Different scale of hostilities to a tractor beam. I was going to say we could use the two that our maneuvers are specifically and quite like. To anyone observing, our maneuvers are very obviously defensive. I like that. Is that acceptable, Jim? What is the suggestion again? Sorry. That 4 2, there's the advantage of our maneuvers are very obviously defensive to any planet side observers. You could do that, yep. Uh, maybe just let the last one go. No. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so. Maybe a one where, where we create the advantage that uh, our maneuvers um, make it more difficult for them to get a, at a target lock on us if they retaliate. No, just using the momentum of the uh, uh, same maneuver or saying that uh, uh, we, we could make it more difficult to lock onto us. Like she kind of did evasive maneuvers while she, like she did the evasive yeah. maneuvers action as well as break away from the um, tractor mm -hmm. being locked. Uh, you could do that. Sure. Uh, comms, let's try and reach down to, to the planet. Opening hailing frequencies now, sir. This is... And that will be the end of part one. Oh.